perfect. Okay, uh, welcome to the planning board meeting for Monday, uh, March 28th. Uh, I'd like to thank HCAM for uh, uh, taping this today. We have at least one board member that is still eligible to vote on this particular hearing that will, it's not missed any meetings, we'll have to watch the, the tape. So uh, we appreciate HCAM uh, taping the meeting for us today. Um, we're going to have a slight schedule change here. We'll, we'll pause the 7.30 public hearing um, at 8 o'clock, recess for a second, then continue on for another half an hour or so, and we'll start the uh, uh, Wood Street uh, DPW facility at 8.30 in, instead of 8 o'clock. Uh, We'll continue that to 8 or 9.30, and then we'll finish up on the rest of the uh, the stuff and get out of here before 10, hopefully. Okay, so I'd like to reopen the public hearing for the Northeast, Northwest, and North Club Villages at Legacy Farms, applications for the Osmond Site Plan <coughs> Review and Amendment to the <coughs> Legacy Farms Master Plan Special Permit uh, for Pulte Homes of New England. So let's see. We have we're in our outline process. I think we want to continue down the outline. In the outline, we were at we were working on trails. I think is when we kind of get some action items on trails. I think from the last time around. Uh, I'm looking for my outline. Here we go. So we were. We kind of talked about trail connections and parking for trails and where does this all fit in with the, the master plan trail review. So, okay. Well, if I could just um, take a, a quick step back. It's been a while since you've been before you, so just by way of uh, just a little bit of a of recap, um, just, uh, just so you know really what we've been up to. We've been kind of busy behind the scenes. Um, since our last meeting, uh, we've had several meetings with the fire department, and um, we have an email. Actually, it was not forwarded to the board, it looked like, but it's an email from the fire department saying that they're happy with, um, with where the plan uh, does stand. So we'll forward that to you so you can, you can see that and put that in the record. Uh, we've had several meetings with the water department. Uh, similarly, we're not aware of any issues. We think every issue is, um, is, is really addressed on that end, but we will get some, some final correspondence. We've had a few uh, good meetings there. Um, we have made, I've gone through, we've had a meeting with uh, the, peer, the peer reviewer and um, Elaine just to kind of go through the, their comments and the plans. And we've made a uh, pretty um, uh, in-depth response letter to that, which was submitted, again, to your, your peer review engineer as well as the, uh, the board. So you have that in your records. We're happy to discuss that if you'd like. Um, we've been before the DRB on three separate occasions to work through some of the uh, planning type issues. We've made very good progress with the, with the DRB, uh, continuing to, to meet with them. Uh, we've had a, a good meeting with the Open Space Committee, uh, obviously talking, uh, talking about trails. Um, and I think we've, we've got a plan that we're, we're in agreement on there, uh, which you kind of leaded that, that off with Ken, so we'll get into that uh, in a moment. Uh, and then we had a, uh, a meeting with the Conservation Commission as well. Uh, again, that was a very um, a positive uh, meeting. The commission was, um, was pleased uh, based on the size of the development and how little um, actually resource area work there was based on the size of the project. Um, we essentially have put the, that portion of it on hold as they wanted just to get through uh, the planning process to make sure there weren't going to be any changes and any significant shifts, uh, get the, uh, the beta letter uh, back once everything's been resolved, and then go back for the commission. But um, again, the results of the first meeting, there weren't any, um, uh, any significant concerns or issues that, uh, that were raised. Um, so with that, I just wanted to let everybody know really what we've been doing because it has been a while since we've been before the, um, been before the board. So. And the plan is we're trying to go through the general discussion on the outline first, and then we'll get down to the nitty-gritty of where the fire hydrants are and all that 
yep. street slopes are and so that we get the view from a couple thousand feet up before we get right down to the street level. So, and I think we were significantly through the trail connections, but I think there were some few action items, if I remember correctly, on that. Right, we did make some modifications to that plan that I can run through with that, you. That'd be great. Okay. Terrific. access uh, parking to allow people uh, to access these trails, which we have added since the last planning board meeting. Uh, the de design review board has seen this plan, as has the open space uh, committee, but I think this is probably the first time we're seeing it here. Uh, and what we've done is added three locations for uh, trailhead parking, off legacy, two of them off Legacy Farms Road North. So there's a little pull in here. This is an enlargement showing what that looks like. So you pull off the road, and there are six heading parking spaces uh, that allow uh, access to that trailhead here. Uh, additionally, there's another uh, trailhead parking area a bit further to the north. Uh, and then we've also added a um, trail trailhead parking area along what was um, the connection off of uh, Wilson Road, I believe. I'm sorry. Thank you. Curve Street. Curve Street. Uh, where we have eight additional spaces that access the trail network in this area. So we think that's a significant improvement to the plan. Uh, and we, we've also located uh, trail connections at the perimeter of the overall property. Uh, keep in mind that the area that Pulte is developing is within this dark line here and this dark line here. So we're connecting these neighborhoods up to that surrounding trail network that would be trail system. There's a trail system as part of this neighborhood off Pond Ridge Road uh, that we now have connections to uh, over our property um, onto that abutting property. So that connects to the broader trail network there. Those were the, uh, the significant modifications. Again, just to key you into this plan, the blue lines are showing trails that were already part of the master plan special permit. Uh, the orange lines are just areas where we've modified that slightly from the red line you see uh, just to accommodate the um, reconfiguration of some of the development parcels. And then the green lines are actually new connections that were not uh, part of that plan before. Okay, so other than the red lines, you haven't taken anything out? No, we've not. In this. What's, what's going right around the pond in the kind of the center part of the picture? There's a red area down right there. Right here? Yes. So this connection has been removed, but this one has been added. So there's still a connection from that neighborhood into that pond. Okay. Is there a way to get around the pond? Yes, the pond you go right around here. No, That's I'm talking about there. walking around the pond. You can walk around the entire pond. <clears throat> so, the trails we're looking at now, we're talking about blue, orange, and green. Correct. <clears throat> and what, again, what is the access to this parking that you have 
Did you say off a curve screen? Well, um, so off Wilson Street. Wilson Street. I thought it was Wilson, street yeah. called Curve Street, and it runs up to St. Serrani House, and where Serrani House was. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a street sign, but that's, the, that's where Serrani House was. There's a road the there? Of, yeah. Okay, I was wondering, because looking at this, I was like, how do you access it? There's parking, but how do you get there? Yeah, there's actually a paved road there right now. Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah. It, it's... It is asphalt, or is it something kind of? It's asphalt, but it's sort of a patchwork quilt of asphalt. Okay. So you can see it in the aerial right here. And so the, the parking that we're talking about is right up in here. <coughs> I mean, that's, that's one of the high points of the property, and so therefore I think that's a good, good parking spot. Mm -hmm. I think well, what's the aggregate number of parking spots total? When you 20 total. 20. I mean, it feels feels about right. But if you had extra, if you had additional demand, is there? Well, yeah. Could, could you ever do anything else, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Yeah. The area is you coming off of Wilson Street, come up what we call Curve Street, yeah, which is <coughs> parallel. Like, Once you get into that area, whether you call it three spaces, five or ten, it's going to be a long area. So if you had excess, if you needed to have excess parking, you could probably well park more cars there. there. If you, yeah, without having to disturb more, no, no more area, area off, off that, that zone. Sure. You also might have, some, friend, you might have a couple of spots that are at the end of the, each of the lead-in roads where I think it's school bus parking or, you know, a couple of spots for there, too, that, you know, on a high weekend. That's what I was thinking. That would, you know, yeah. I don't think during the day, weekdays, you're going to be a problem. No, it's just going to be a weekend thing. I mean, if we find a, a huge demand, I think we could expand some of the area along Legacy Farms Road. Yes. I think mean, the Roy's Roy spot, that's, yeah. Yeah. Plus that's the high, that's the high mark too, right? Throughout the Anybody know this Ken Parker in here somewhere? Yeah. There you are. Yeah. Got any comments? Well, so, uh, just like to point out, I guess, uh, given the opportunity that our plans for the Upper Charles Trail Committee is to hope to get the bike path to go uh, on the west side of the property over here, possibly right along uh, the, the, the Blue Trail in some fashion. You know. uh, we're not exactly sure uh, where that ought to go, why I haven't been on the property, but uh, it seems to me that it's rather consistent with these plans. So. Really happy about that. Well, we've got the engineers here. Is, is that are the grades on that portion of the Blue Trail anywhere suitable for a bike pass? I mean, that's a pretty good incline. That's an incline. <laughs> some of it, some of it's a steep. I mean, a mountain bike, I can understand, but I'm not so sure that. Well, you, you, you've got elevations ranging from six to 12, 14 percent grade. Yeah, along it's, that area, it's, it's, it's steep. quite steep. Yeah. It's toward, toward, toward France, it's steep. There's an existing nursery road. Uh, I'm not sure how this relates to the existing nursery road. I didn't think that that was all that steep. Uh, the existing nursery road is exactly the puppy is exactly down the middle of the street mm -hmm. between Roger Mezzo's line and this parcel. Uh -huh. You travel the one that goes down between the two ponds. Uh -huh. I guess so. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, so that is, is that still going to be pop, uh, Yeah, that's, that's still going to be a gravel road. Right. So, I don't know. Um, very well can serve that purpose. There could possibly be some, I don't know, if the land accommodates, maybe you could make a, a curve to a loop to get up the hill differently, and we're going to have to do that in other places. So. Switchbacks. Switchbacks, something like that. Question for the yeah, uh, go ahead. Dr. Parker. Yeah. Um, how much uh, of a traffic concern is it for a safety concern for traffic crossing uh, Main Street? Uh, is there in other places? <coughs> as in, is it I'd say that's one of the biggest barriers to the trail system <coughs> in town in general. But unfortunately, those are barriers for the trail system anywhere in town. Sure. Okay. So uh, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not very sanguine about how safe it would be to park across Main Street, but then, you know, I don't see a good place to cross Main Street any place. So it's, it's that was my nice question. the difficulties that we have uh, envisioning the trail system. Every time we cross one of the state highways, great difficulty in accomplishing that. 
No, we've set up the Legacy Farms crossing is to be a relatively safe crossing at that part. You know, <coughs> and you do have that trail or that sidewalk, large, wide sidewalk sure. that accommodates lots of folks there. If, if worse comes to worse. Other questions from the board members or the public about trails? It appears to me we have kind of working hard to implement what was perceived to be during the master plan portion. So I'd like to just make one further comment. Conditions 27 requires the restoration plan for the north parcel. Roy, which I think is more on your shoulders than theirs, but it's something that has to be done. I thought we gave that to Elaine, didn't we? I think we actually gave that with the also. Okay. I can get you another copy if you'd like. Okay, that's good. If I, just the notes that we've got said that we're still missing it, so. Okay, well, we may have lost that in the trans. Okay. Let's, let's add condition 27 to the outline general at the end. Okay. So I think uh, everyone's happy there. Let's let's hit the next one, which is small strips, which is uh, buildable versus restricted parcels. I remember the plan. I brought the one, but I think you guys had something in color that kind of showed that pretty nicely. Is this the one you're recalling? I think so. Yeah, some of the buildable move it and moved, and some of it <coughs> added. Yeah, so if you look at the um, the legend on the on the bottom <coughs> left, so the the green is essentially the new the new building area that wasn't on the the, the previous um, plans. Um, the gray is essentially what's consistent between the two plans, and the yellow is what has actually been removed from the the, the previously approved plans. So as we presented, I think the original. Uh, project, there has been a substantial reduction in the buildable area for this project. It was um, 89.1 acres on the, the master plan special permit, um, and now what is actually proposed for you has been reduced down to 74.5 acres. So it's a pretty pretty substantial reduction. And, and the reason what we really wanted to try to do, you notice where the, where the yellow is, um, we've tried to reduce that along the areas that we, we thought made the most sense, mainly right along the main um, main street. You can see we try to provide a, a, right. a buffer between Holding all of the back from the from the roadway to maintain as much existing vegetation as we can. Exactly, the the exactly. So that went into our, our, our design considerations with the slopes of the road and how we got to certain areas and what buffering we could keep and try to have the, um, you know, as much separation as possible. And we also provide some, you can see, to the um, to the rear of the site, which, again, was part of what I, I think went um, with what Conservation Commission liked. We try to pull things back uh, and try to respect the um, uh, the wetland resource buffer areas uh, as, as much as we could. So we, we felt as though those were important portions of the site to really try to, um, you know, make this effort to shrink the buildable area that was previously proposed. What's the downside to that? I mean, it looks more dense. At, that, at, at, that the end of, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, you have the same amount of units, yeah. one, one way or the other. And typically, I think the whole purpose for, for, for why this board and others, they, they wanted to set this up where you have uh, buildings and development in one area, which maximized how much open space was there for you know, the, the benefit of yeah. the, the bigger community. Um, so this allows more of a contiguous open space. So I, I really <coughs> personally don't, don't see much of a downside. I think it's more of a positive. Right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in the answer to that question, I think one of the things we learned from the south side is trying to keep the buildings further away from the main road. So when you're driving through, you're now looking either at the rear of buildings or a line of buildings closer to the road itself. So the concept here was to push everything further back. So if you're the public driving through the site, yeah. 
you're seeing much more green space and less of the buildings. We felt that was more important because I know that was one of the complaints we had on the south side. Okay. It makes, makes sense. Yeah. I mean, lessons learned. Mm -hmm. yeah. and apply it. Exactly. The, the part that I don't have a good feeling about is these small strips of restricted land that are practically basically the guy's backyard. I'll say the small strip between the North Club Village. I mean, I, that's all development as far as I'm concerned. You, you, You're talking about this line in between? Yeah. What is it? Between, between two rows out. Between yes. Pine and Oak? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I can't see how you justify that one and a couple of the other ones that are not big enough to do anything with. And, and we're going to, I think, one of our my lessons learned is that we're not going to let you bulldoze into the restricted land area. Okay. That makes sense. So you, so you think about it, you're going to have maybe a, a snow fence along there because you know go stripping the, all the dirt out of the restricted land areas. So to, to that comment, if, if I could, um, when you look in the actually the guidelines for the um, for the master plan special permit guidelines, they actually define. You know different types of um, restricted land and, and what you have. You know it breaks it out into different areas, whether it be natural areas, maintained areas, you know, some agricultural areas, but I'm part of the, the, the pulpy um, portion, obviously, and then uh, active recreation areas, which would be, you know, for, for instance, a tot lot and other areas. Um, so re the restricted areas are actually defined within the, um, uh, the the town's guidelines, and there's different, um, frankly, characteristics of restric uh, restricted land. And, and the plan does does comply. Again, our, our, our big goal really was to push everything in to keep the buffers um, bigger on the outside, you know, by way of uh, along the main road and, again, against the resource areas. I, I don't areas. have a problem with the resource areas, and I don't have a problem with the, what, the, the big areas along the main road. Where I have a problem is calling it restricted land in between the rows of houses almost throughout. I mean, you've got, a couple, you've got one that... It isn't, it isn't 10, 15 feet wide. That's not restricted land. That's buildable land. If, yeah, if, 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 I'm only, if I'm only 20 feet from you, that's from here to there. Mm -hmm. okay, that's you, not re Are you referring to this piece that, here, this yeah. piece here, yeah. these little ones? Yeah. I, I think, frankly, I think we, and I'll check with Pulte, I'll check our own records. I think we have enough restricted land that we don't necessarily have to count those. Okay. I mean, because I, I, I just can't. I, can, I can't. Yeah. yeah. And I was withholding comment until we had a chance to, to review this comment, and then we can get back to the board. Yeah, I, I, think, okay. I think your comment is a legitimate one. Okay. If I may, through the chair? Yeah, go ahead, Brent. Uh, my issues kind of echo what uh, the chair and, mm -hmm. and my colleague have said. Um, and I appreciate what Roy said about uh, the south side of the project. Um, as it stands right now, as I'm looking at this, I see it that it's way too dense. Uh, and it's if there's a way for it to I know you're trying but uh, is, is there a way for it to look less dense and maybe be less dense and I'm not saying spread it out or whatever but I don't know what the solution is but uh, as it sits right now it, it's there's going to be other buildings around these too and it's, it's going to be way too crowded I, See, I, think, I think the unfortunate thing is I think the way this is being shown is doing it a disservice because everything that's a buildable area, they're showing in gray, but they're not showing the green between all the buildings, so it looks a hell of a lot more dense than it really is. Well, what we mm -hmm. ought to do is bring you back a drawing of a little larger scale to, that shows the space. But to go back to Ken's point, what are the distances between each of the buildings? And it's that still looks and feels too dense. I mean, to Roy, to your point, I mean, you look at this, is it the North North Village? I mean, you start here at the bottom, you know, just to the right of center. You go eight deep before you get really any kind of green space. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm there are eight deep in homes before you get to any real green space. Yes. No, I'm, no, no, I'm talking about here. here. No, now the rows. The rows of homes here. We have Cherry Street. We have one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, and then you've got green space, finally. So I think if you go back to, could you go back to the full square sharing I hear what you're saying, but I think the concept was to have, and it gets to Ken's point, to have green space of significant size to have some useful purpose 
And you're right, these narrow little green spaces here, I would argue, don't serve a, much of a public benefit other than just a buffer. But I think when you look at the much larger, broader, useful green spaces, the idea is to maximize them. That's why this could pull in, this could pull in, this could pull back to get it further from the road, just to get some real usable green space rather than a bunch of little patches everywhere. Not just for the well, residents here, but for one the, time for the, the community as a whole. Well, right. I, I think we're, what we're really talking about, and it's d further down in our outline, maybe we could have kind of put them together, but it's really, when we went to simplex units, the unintended consequence was that we lost 20 feet in between each unit. If you do this plan with a bunch of quads in there, it would lot, look a lot less dense because the units themselves would be closer to each other. And that's what we saw in the master plan that's, you know, on the wall behind it. When, when we approved the master plan special permit, it looked a little less dense because there was a lot of quads in there. And so the, the, point. the green space, instead of being around it, it, now we have green space in between each unit. And, you know, and I understand that simplex is you know, are worth more than duplexes and are worth more than quads, etc. And I know the economics of it, And but I don't know whether we've got a really good design, per se, because we got a lot of stuff on a really small part. I mean, this looks significantly more dense than the south side. Which looks extra dense, more than I thought it would be. Well, yeah. Claire? If, if I can weigh in, um, just backing up, this entire project from the start has been compromised. And from the outset, the fact that we could maximize open space and get basically 500 open space, the trade-off was clustering. Density to maximize the open space is not gobbled up by development that would preserve the land that would be available to the public to continue to use. Um, you know, the more you spread it out, the more you gobble up the space. In fact, Legacy has a requirement for a certain amount of acres to be in open space for the town. So if we, re we start to ask them to spread out the houses, you've only got so much space. You think, are you going to start taking away from the open space, which is what we really wanted. We don't want the whole site, you know, gobbled up with spread out houses. That was the whole idea. Um, and, and to the simplex issue, um, you know, I think we as a community are starting to feel, based on what we're doing in our zoning, uh, at town meeting, that we've got enough townhouses and, and you know, condo multifamily type developments in this town. I think, you know, um, I've always maintained that there are people that want a simple, a simple, small, single-family house, and there's something different about a detached dwelling from a townhouse. Um, you know, I think I think it's a plus for this development to provide a variety of housing choices for different people with different needs. And you know, if you were to change those simplexes over to a few more townhouses, I don't think it would appreciably you know, affect um, the overall development. Uh, it would just provide less variety and more more townhouses, which it, it's sometimes a different clientele. So, you know, I agree that it's dense, but I think it's also part of what we as a town agreed upon when we entered into the Osmo. And I think that also goes to, and I'll support that sentiment, Claire, and I think it goes to what the broader public good is being served by having the larger open space areas. I think the second thing is, is you're letting the market to a certain degree dictate, you know, what type of home the person's interested in. If, if they can see what they're going to purchase. If they're, you know, 10 or 20 feet next to the guy behind them, you see that up front, you agree to it or, or don't agree to it and look to go somewhere else. So, uh, you know, I don't think we can have our cake necessarily eat it too. To, to the full extent that it is there, but I think, you know, broadly speaking, I think, you know, to Claire's point, the larger open spaces, I think the community as well as the residents that live in there are going to benefit from that.
comment responses to beta have made some efforts to um, soften some of the look and feel of these neighborhoods in many ways that are not apparent yet in the plans because we'll be making those revisions as we um, receive feedback again from beta and from yourselves. But uh, there are a lot of things we, we plan on introducing into the current design uh, that will introduce additional open space into these, these individual neighborhoods. Uh, we've, for example, we've talked about adding pocket parks uh, in each of the neighborhoods like we have um, you know, along the, uh, the Northwest Village neighborhood. We have a pocket park here and a linear pocket park right here. One of the comments from Beta, which was um, we thought was appropriate, was can't some of these other neighborhoods have those kinds of design features too? So we're, we're actually going to be introducing them uh, in each of the, uh, the other three neighborhoods um, to try to uh, diffuse some of that, that density feel and introduce some green space within the neighborhoods. We've also looked at uh, you know, providing a little more uh, curve and interest to the, the grid-like roadways that are in here. That's on one of the, the beta response comments. We have an exhibit for that that I can pull out later. Um, looking at uh, potential uh, <coughs> applications, uh, we've, we've highlighted where we're maintaining existing trees, uh, where we're going to be staggering some units in and out so that the um, the relationship to the street varies so that you're not seeing a, a constant line of garages. Things move in and out uh, as your eye looks down that roadway. Um, so we, we are going to be introducing some things that I think will um, help to mitigate uh, some of the density. But as John mentioned and I think we've talked about, we, we are trying to keep it compact and provide a, a unit that the, the market will, will be interested in. Uh, and when you get into the quads and, and triplexes, that gets a little tougher to do. Um, so that's... Okay, just one second. Let's pause and hold the thought for a second. Uh, I'm going to open the public hearing for 43 Wood Street Site Plan Review and uh, look for a motion to continue it to 8.30. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. How do you vote? Aye. 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 While we're kind of talking a little bit more in general, the roadway trail area right at the end of, was it Fifth Street, from where it connects across? Right here. Yeah, when we did that, when you did the blow up in that, you got a trail that is literally 10 feet off a guy's back deck, 15 feet maybe. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, those that's something. units are going to be shifted apart from that trail a little bit and again that's uh, we put that in our response letter to beta but mm -hmm. we will be adjusting uh, we, we need to landscape something to, in that area absolutely because mm -hmm. we, yeah, we, yeah, we agree okay the right. design review board had that same very comment that uh, at their last meeting really yeah. there's a f there's a there's a few locations there's one at the end of that and then there's also a couple up in the northeast. And so we, we talked about spreading, the, giving more room for the trail, and then, and then landscaping on the side of the trail to delineate the actual where, where the people walk. So okay. Mr. Chairman, I think this is the exhibit you were probably referring yeah. to. Yeah. Shows a blow up of that area. So we'll be able to slide these units a little bit to make, make additional room for that trail connection. And utilize landscaping to delineate Absolutely. the, the path right. with some signage. Right. We talked about even maybe a little section of split rail fence that delineates where uh, where the trail is supposed to go through there. And, <coughs> no, I'm, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Uh, okay, so. We've kind of gone through the buildable versus restricted, and you guys are going to come back to us on that. Preservation of mature existing trees. On the south side, we took down an awful lot of trees, some of which would look really nice today if they were still there. But uh, So let's kind of hit that one again. Sure. Uh, we On the package that went to beta, that's the first sheet of the set that you received, we did highlight... Uh, stands of mature trees that we are going to be saving uh, as a result of the, the plans that we're 
talking about here. So you can see along the entry drive, uh, there's quite a quite a large stand of trees that will buffer the view to the homes up on the hill here. That will all be maintained. We'll be maintaining all the vegetation uh, up along the edge of, of Phipps. Uh, there's a large stand of mature pines as you come up around the curve of Legacy Farm Road North. Um, it really stands out. It's near that old foundation um, that uh, I think that will make a nice site feature. Uh, and then you can see other areas in that same green color where we're internal to the project maintaining uh, existing stands of mature vegetation, which isn't to say we're um, you can see from the aerial photograph how much we're maintaining at the perimeter, but we wanted to highlight within the development where uh, where we're going to be maintaining those, those existing mature trees. So if I take it from that exhibit, basically everything where you've turned into green and, and overlaid the photo of existing trees is going to be clear cut. That is... Yeah. That is accurate. Yeah, that's within our limits of grading uh, to build the roads and homes. So the, the areas that are left uncolored are the areas where existing mature trees will be preserved. Claire? Can I ask a question? Just on the topic of mature trees mm -hmm. elsewhere on the site, um, we have a letter from a, a neighbor down on the, in the Wilson Street area that mentioned that there are trees that are sort of the head of Kruger Road that provide screening for them from some of the gas company um, goings on okay. and questioning whether those are trees near Kruger that are going to be removed. So yeah. it would be, I assume, on Legacy's land, but uh, along that Wilson Street area at the head of Kruger Road. Are there <coughs> things down, that down things? here? Yeah, Kruger comes in a little further down, like if you kept going down Wilson Street, you hit Kruger. Okay. Well, there's, no, there's nothing going on with this plan relative to that. Yeah. Okay. So that that's areas on that, is, that right. isn't to say that it, with the next next plan that it might be touched, but so right but now, right now we're not touching. To touch any mature existing trees down there at the lower part of the site. Correct. Okay. Wow. Are there other decent trees within, say, the area where the Western Nursery buildings are that are worth saving? Of mature trees? Just along Phipps. Just along Phipps. Right. Which we've we've looked at uh, preserving um, in some enlargement plans that I can share as well. Yeah, part, part of the design, actually, we, we did locate some of these trees because we actually wanted to try to save what we could. Again, much of this land had been uh, clear-cut previously, um, but before we started our layout, we actually had gone out and tried to identify some areas that would be beneficial to save, and that was worked into the um, uh, the design that, that Matt put together with the roadway layout. Right, so these are two sheets that flow up that, that area along Fifth Street, um, and you can see we've, we've located larger... Uh, existing trees that we intend to save, and then we're adding additional buffer planting on the project side of those trees. So these symbols represent uh, additional new planting, but these symbols represent those existing trees along FIPS that would remain. Uh, and, and to address that, Mr. Mesut is asking that that, that screening on FIPS go in as soon as possible, keep the dust down and get as much jump start on the growing as possible. I don't know whether you're in a position to put those in sooner. We haven't seen this letter until we arrived this evening. Well, he, he, he's just basically saying if the new plant, we appreciate the new plantings. If they're installed immediately, they'll begin to recover and fill in, reducing dust during North Club Village construction and functioning more successfully when the houses are sold just because the amount of time it takes them to establish. So I don't know. I know you need to do your land work, but you might keep in mind that this is going to be a good time for you. Yeah, I'm going to suggest that the uh, multi group thing I've been together with Mesuts to go over their letter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Claire, it doesn't look like they're 20 feet away. No, I'm just... I'm just if I look at how the south side's built, there's no way in hell they're going to be preserved. 
Uh, what? No, I don't think he was talking about no. preserving. He's talking about. Um, no, I mean, preserved during construction. If you put the, put the, if you put the screening lens in before the houses, they're not going to survive. I don't think. Uh, Maybe. Well, we can look. I mean, we can look at it. I think don't to Roy's at. point is we just received uh, a couple of comment letters tonight sure. that we haven't had the opportunity to review. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, after this meeting, before the next meeting, we'll, we'll do so and, and we'll see, um, you know, and we'll, we'll be able to provide a response. Well, just finishing up on that, I think a piece of his concern is keeping dust down. And you recall on the South Porsche course, um, portion, the dust to the Curtis Road people was a huge problem. And the Curtis Road folks were really the only real butters. And in this case, the messes up at Fifth Street are really the only real butters. So if that can help. Claire, what, what's yeah. going to happen is if, if you look at the early stages of the tank down construction, mm -hmm. almost everything near the mezzes is pavement. And the first phase of construction on the first, I'll call it, year or two, is probably a half a mile away from that. Mm -hmm. So there'll be no really disturbance. Again, we'll be happy to get together with the residents, but I think their concern about dust relative to the early phases of construction mm -hmm. is so far away from them, I don't see that as an issue. But again, we'll meet with them on that. Been a flashpoint for the Any other comments, questions from the public or the board members about preserving the trees? Dave Paul, Southern Maryland. Question about the screening. What kind of screening will it be? Trees, bushes? Uh, yeah, uh, evergreen trees, deciduous trees. We've got a whole mix of, of plants from serviceberry, stewardia, uh, eastern red cedar, spruce, uh, pine. So a good percentage of it will be trees? Yes. Yep. If I may. Sure. Good question. Um, a lot of um, things that I've been reading about, about trees and stuff, um, Partly trees are to um, air quality and of the light. Um, evergreens are great for buffers, I mean for, for visual um, stops, but as far as um, being conducive to environmental aspect, um, broadleaf trees are, are much more um, eco friendly. I don't know how or if. Something can be done about that, but um, I truly believe that that statement is, um, is is a viable and backed up statement. I think there's a mixture of absolutely. Uh, we we're pretty, we are using evergreens mainly as buffer and screening planting, but our streets are planted exclusively with deciduous trees. Uh, we have deciduous trees, hundreds on, on the uh, proposed plans. Um, and, and they're mixed in, you know, appropriately throughout the, the development. So what is, we're not relying on, on evergreens for, for all of our trees. It's, it's a percentage, but it's what's not even half, probably. What is it? What? Probably, I, I can't give you a number off the top of my head, but it's probably in the 20 to 30 percent range. Of, of evergreens versus? Versus. Indigenous trees? D deciduous, right. Yeah, deciduous. Yeah. Um, okay. To the chair. Uh, sorry, sir. Um, yeah. yeah, just just as as I so put is that I I, I would like to see um, broadleaf trees more so um, because they stand out. They they kind of um, do what Claire has uh, has indicated is um, catch more debris and stuff, and they they seem to to last a lot longer than evergreens when they're encroached upon by street salts and everything else. So that being said. Okay. Mr. Chair, yeah. can you just put a name and address for the record? I'm just, I'm oh, sorry, Clifford Kistner, 86 West Main Street, Hopkinton, Mass. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. okay. I think we're set on, oh, Frank, go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure if this entails everything on this topic, uh, but I, I like uh, Cliff's point about the uh, broadleaf trees. Um, uh, Julia Linnell has an issue, a uh, question about um, using different uh, herbicides and suggests using uh, the NOFA, <coughs> Northeast Organic Farming Association Certified Organic Landscaping Methods. I think the area she was wor worried about was down by the, the 
the reservoir side, and, and this is pretty far from that. But wherever we are in the, the watershed area, I guess yes, it, that's a valid comment. I, uh, I, I like this point, and um, I don't, you guys will have to see a copy of this letter for them. Um, maybe you guys could respond and, and see if, if you could. could uh, is that something you could work with uh, in your in your project? Um, uh, as a member of the Green Committee, I'm also very interested in this, and I'm, mm -hmm. we'll look into more in, in, into this later as well. Just got this today; she just sent it today, I guess, too. So, okay. Um, if I may, sure. Yeah. Because um, we, we we have that issue with with our lakes about about our lakes being um, run over by weeds, um, and again, you know, the runoff is is a big issue for the town of Hoppington, um, and. I'll, I'll second my uh, Frank's um, statement on that too. Is that um, I think she's not talking about fertilizer; we're talking about weed kill. But it's still. <laughs> it's I, I understand. Well, part part okay. The same yep. issue. Okay. Uh, let's go on to the next one, which is cuts and fills. Let's talk about where your big cuts and where your big fills are. site uh, standpoint, it's such generally, generally balanced. We try to, there's a lot of topography on the on the site. Um, so what we tried to do was, was essentially minimize the amount of um, earthwork um, and balance the cuts and fills. But over in this area, uh, where we'll be starting off uh, the construction first, uh, this area here has actually has some, some cuts on the, um, on the site. Uh, and over here is actually where more of the more of the fill will occur on the uh, on the property. We when we phase the uh, project, we actually have within the plans that were submitted, we showed some definitive stockpile areas and areas of the like. We're actually going to further refine that with the information that we provide to you. Um, however, uh, again, the plan would be to really to cut from over here. Fill from over here, and again, there's cuts and fills within each individual <coughs> section, um, but there'd be more of a, of a section here where we would actually uh, cut and actually put some of the material back back on that side. To do that, the backs we will have one spot where we cross the road. It was a concern that was brought earlier, not to have trucks going up and down up and down the road. So we thought a well thought out approach would be to have one crossing point as we go across the road. And then utilize the haul roads that currently exist on the on the property to bring the material to where it ultimately will need to uh, will need to go. So basically, you'll be hauling it along the north parcel. Where there'd be a you see some roads right right in here. Yeah, that's utilizing it. some of those existing um, travel ways that are there to that. Don't we have restrictions on that already? Or not? I don't know. I'll, I'll check that out tomorrow. So there's a little nursery roads. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's. Well, I, I, you know, I, I'm just not sure I have a, a good feeling about taking our hiking and using it for a haul road for a couple of years. I mean, that's just going to make it much more difficult to. Restore. Yeah, I think uh, restoration is, 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 is something that certainly needs to be planned to happen. Um, and I think alternatively, it'd be we could create new roads, you know, off off of that. I'm not sure what the benefit of that would be, because because clearly you wouldn't want to go up and down the. Um, uh, well, you, the well you, with the wetlands, you not be able to go. You have to either go far up the hill and or not. I mean, you can't get get along there. It's just near the road, you could do it on the north of north of that parcel, uh, in your development area. Mm -hmm. there, there is a gravel uh, road there now. <coughs> Can you see it on the plane? Yeah, I think that's that's yeah. what's right here. Yeah, that's that's what I was referring to. I think that would make the most sense to try to. I will actually check to see if we restrict that piece yet or not. I'm not sure. You don't have to tie off. What? You don't have a ton of options, do you? 
Well, why don't you start off uh, the other side? You can cross over like the same way, proposed top lot or something like that, as opposed to crossing over up on top of our hill. Prefer to come down and cross. I don't know. I mean, uh, but it was, it was too. yeah. But I, I, I'm more concerned about a hall road on land that's going to be restricted and left as an open space. I mean, if it was a typical open safe subdivision, we wouldn't let that happen. So, so we'll can we'll look into that. But the reason we chose the location that John was kind of identifying it is a very, very delineated, wide road in the field today. So um, it really makes looking at it, it makes a lot of sense to, to use that road. And that, that is why we, why we picked it. It's it's wide and it's very usable. Yeah, and at least a piece of that road is going to have to be maintained because it's got a. Um, there's a tower, tower there's a at the tower. end of it. Uh, yeah. I don't know who who owns it. Microwave tower or some kind of tower. It's a stone tower. That's not. That's going to be. But it, but, it, but it isn't isn't it isn't it's it comes off of uh, off of Wilson Street to get to the cell tower as opposed yeah. to get coming off of the other way. Is there a fire road out there? Well, there there are nursery roads right now. I guess that's the best way to describe that. Little things make picture better. I. You know, one of the gems of this property is, is that north parcel. Mm -hmm. And the least amount of stuff we do to it, you know, I'd love to see it restored to where it's supposed to be and be, continue to be a, a gem. But we'll look for that. Roy thinks he's got the, the plan for that already submitted. Do we have a written description somewhere that I can see what restricted open space is and what can and can't be done on it? Uh, Jen, you can. I can pull that and get it to you. Yeah. I'll also get you that condition 27. I'm fairly sure we have that plan. Okay. Thank you. Give it to you tomorrow. Can you give us a little bit more details on, on cuts and fills, number of cubic yards going from where to where for our next meeting? Yeah. I mean, I, I just want, you know, is, is in, the, in the cuts, are you expecting a lot of blasting? Um, I don't think we're expecting a lot of blasting, no. But there, there, may be, there may be some, but I, we're not expecting much blasting. I can tell you all the test pits we've done today have not recovered, uh, encountered any ledge other than some of this area. Okay. The rest of the site has no ledge. In the drainage report that we did, we had uh, beyond the, uh, the, the testing that uh, Mr. McDowell mentioned, you know, we had 30 some odd test pits. Now we've got a few more minutes here. I just want to introduce the next subject. We're coming back to all these in the next one mm -hmm. construction management plan. Uh, I think I was looking to beta to provide. A good example to us from one of your other projects, and that's something that we'd like you to submit. Yeah, we'd be happy to take a look at it in great detail as to what's going on, because based on the south side, as far as I'm concerned, the broader it's not going to be is few conditions as we did on the south side. I mean, there's going to be a construction management plan that's expected to be followed. Tighter. Much tighter, in my opinion. You know, resolve how many acres you're going to be open at a time, things like that. Where if all roads are going to be timing, are you going to shut down for, for winter time when cover can't be planted, etc. cetera. Uh, all those good things that might be in a construction management plan. I think we're just about out of our hour at this point. So I'd entertain a motion. Uh, what time? So we can have a special meeting next Monday. I can get um, six of you and maybe Frank, maybe? Um, maybe. Frank's a maybe. 
than everybody uh, else. If that's the day, I'll try to do it. So. Yeah. Is, so is, has she, have you missed one yet of these? No. Okay, so so we're still good. So yeah, next so, Monday? Yeah, we can do a special meeting. And you guys can meet next Monday? I, I'd just like a little bit more information on the effects or how only having six and maybe seven board members plays into the, the review and, and, you know, and voting. I mean, it is certainly, you know, we'd like well, you know, all of the board members to... to be we participating in the meetings and to be able to vote. We only have seven members total now because one resigned, so that's all we have. So. Yeah. All eight. Yeah, oh, but eight. he I'm sorry. missed his two meetings. But then one had hasn't been yet, 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 so, yet. Yet. Yeah. so he's out. So he's out. Yeah. So we only have so seven right. members. Right. Can we get a seven to person if they can't be here watching on TV and qualify for that? That's why I asked Frank. He's, he has not missed any of these, I don't right. think. And John Ferrari will watch tonight. Yeah. As yeah. long as they only miss one, they can watch it on TV and sign an out, uh, a certification and continue to vote. Yeah. Okay. You can only do that once. You can work correct. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I have a little chart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and your concern is my concern because we are down a lot more members. Mm -hmm. And I don't like it to get to the point where I'll say one person could have a veto on something, mm -hmm. which you know, that sometimes happens. So. Um, just a question. I mean, what do we have? What do we, we have three meetings left before the election? Uh, well, we'll meeting? Yes. yes. Well, we're the elections. We're going to do the elections. We'll have yeah. three regular meetings, then we'll have a special meeting next week. So We might have to have another special one closer to elections. I don't know. We'll see what we have, how we, what we get. And this next. Going have to do anything before the election. We're talking about the election. Uh, will there be three seats that will be run for? Or I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Because the last meeting we asked, or some, maybe I asked Elaine an email. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's up to the selectmen, and, and I'm not so sure that it's possible to add positions to the, to the warrant at this point. So it would be an appointed position, perhaps. Four years. Right. right, but that person has already missed two meetings. They couldn't vote anyway. Right. We're, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the answer for that. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to seven April fourth at seven thirty to continue the public continued public hearings to the northeast, northwest, and north club villages at Legacy Farms Road. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for this discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Um, entertain a motion to continue the public hearing to amend Legacy Farms Master Plan Special Permit, uh, LLC Legacy Farms, uh, to uh, 7.34th of April. So moved. Okay. Moved and seconded for the discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion I, carries. I abstain. One abstention. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Uh, okay. Let's. Uh, can, can you find John and yeah, Krug? Okay. We're going to be shifting gears to Wood Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody is. I hope you don't have to do that. Is that a few things on the prime very much? Yeah, there are people who do that. Most people don't like it. There it is. So far, she's doing okay. From my standpoint. Good, how are you? And she's a professional, so I think that's a lot of enough. But we did at the end of the day have to vote that. That's what the judge is going to do.
Hey, Dan. How are we doing? Why don't you guys sit down and let's get going. Yeah. He's also at that end. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's just a baby. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Uh, are uh, we ready to get continue here? Okay. Uh, I'd like to call the public hearing to order for 43 Wood Street. This is a site plan review for the town of Hopkinton, a new uh, Department of Public Works facility. And uh, we have created an outline. Uh, Jennifer took the lead on this, uh, which we'll start to follow. And then in item number four, uh, we'll add to the outline like we, okay. we do. I, I know Dan's familiar with the process. Uh, and, uh, you know, I our expectations is to get pretty far along tonight uh, and uh, but I think there was a few outstanding things between the engineers that we're probably not going to finish tonight so and we've got an about an hour or so to, to, to go for tonight so hour and a little bit I think we can squeeze in um, so, why don't well, we start? I think we've got the team here that can answer most of all questions. So, good. Well, why don't you start uh, with a project introduction? I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Alberti with Weston and Sampson for that, so we can just keep this thing moving. Okay. Thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to speak to you this evening. Um, can everyone see these boards okay where they're located? Okay. All right. Uh, what I'd like to do is give you a general overview of the information that was contained in our application. Try to touch on the high uh, high level points, and then if um, you'd like to get into any detail, we'd be happy to uh, jump back and look at any slides and get into any of the detail. Um, this is the existing public works facility. It's located at, at 83 Wood Street. Just want to point out a couple of um, elements to the site. First, in the center, the dark colored roof. That's their existing facility, about 8,200 square foot uh, masonry building. Over to the right, we have two white colored structures. Those are fabric structures. Those are actually recently constructed where they replaced a uh, structure that had been there that had actually collapsed under the snow loads. And the goal there was to try to cover as much of that equipment as possible. Um, also in the lower part of the uh, image here, we have the salt storage structure. And then scattered throughout the site, you'll see trailers and ancillary structures um, in pretty tough shape, but represent um, facilities that are used um, by the public works. And then in the upper left, we have the existing pump station that will remain. Uh, we show in dark green here the approximate limit of the wetlands around the perimeter of the site. And I think the takeaway really is that this site has been used by Public Works since the 60s, um, that they're really built out and are using really up to the edge of that wetlands. And the goal of this project was to really maintain that, that area and not expand it any further. And so we'll talk a little bit about uh, how we plan to do that. But one of the things, because this facility was built so long ago, is that um, the stormwater management system really doesn't exist for the site. Uh, there was no regulations in place at the time. 
And one of the benefits of this project is it gives us an opportunity to improve on that stormwater management system. These are just a couple of photos if you haven't been down to the site, just to give you a sense of what we have. This is over on the left-hand side, north being up on the page, uh, where you have paved areas where vehicles are operating that basically drain to a lower, small depression area and then right into the wetlands. Basically untreated, there's no stormwater management system. Same thing occurs in the upper right, you can see where you have paved to gravel uh, into the adjacent uh, wetland areas, and the same thing down here in the lower right, where again you have um, materials that are actually stored right up to that edge. Really no good stormwater management system. So one of our main goals of the project, in addition to meeting the needs of the public works, was to really improve the overall um, development of the site. So what's planned is to take those ancillary structures and those trailers and a lot of equipment that's actually just stored outdoors because they don't have room and consolidate that into a public works facility, approximately 40,000 square feet. And that's this main structure shown here. Uh, it also includes a new salt storage structure where we've actually shifted it further away from the wetlands, both inboard from the east as well as from the south. Uh, we've used the building to generally shield the residential properties on the west side and we have the yard operations on the right side, on the east side. The gray areas represent the paved surfaces, and what we're proposing is that vehicles would enter the site, they travel into the yard, into the building, and they'll actually drive into the building, park within here, and then when they exit, they'll pull straight out. We've also <coughs> separated out the parking area. If you've been to the site now, it's basically a, a free-for-all. You have public vehicles, uh, employee vehicles, and DPW vehicles all mixed together. What this allows us to do is to separate them immediately so they're not mixing in with the yard operations. So operationally, that provides a great benefit. Uh, we've also provided a fueling facility shown on the bottom right, as well as bulk material storage bins. These are basically those concrete bin blocks that allow them to store the materials in a, compa in a compact manner. So as part of the development, we wanted to really improve on that stormwater that I mentioned. And uh, what we're using is really three main uh, items for, as our first lines of defense, first being uh, deep sump catch basins. So all the stormwater from the site will enter into these catch basins that are around the site. From there, they'll go into a storm scepter type structure, or technic structure. Uh, from there, they'll travel through to underground recharge, tension and recharge systems. So basically, all of that runoff within these paved areas, as well as from the roof, will be captured in these systems. And what that will allow us to do is take what we have, I know this is a little far from you guys, for you guys to see, but we have our pre-development flows listed in yellow at the bottom here, and then we have our post-development flows. And what we've come up with with this design is uh, post-development flows are all less than the pre-development flows uh, for the site. And then in the bottom left, we've included the TSS removal rates, and we've achieved with this treatment chain a 89% uh, TSS removal rate compared to what they have now, which is probably 0% uh, based on... Um, the conditions that exist. So it's being generous. Yeah, yeah <laughs> probably. It's probably, yeah. Uh, so it is a great improvement, uh, meets all the DP stormwater management policy uh, requirements. We've gone through, uh, submitted to Conservation Commission. We, re we received an order of conditions uh, for the project. We went through some subsequent minor modifications since that submission. Those were submitted to BETA, and in their recent response, they indicated that um, they felt that all the changes were. Uh, insignificant in that uh, we've met the requirements that were approved by Conservation Commission. So um, the stormwater system is in good shape. Uh, with regard to the plantings, uh, what we're showing, generally speaking, in green are the areas that would be vegetated. The perimeter would be restored, and the disturbed areas would be restored, uh, loam and seeded. And then we've provided some vegetation and plantings along the parking area to meet the parking planting requirements. We've included deciduous trees as well as some ground cover and shrubs within this area, noting that the caliper of the trees shall be a minimum of uh, two and a half inches, which was one of the comments from beta. So that's been incorporated into the plans. And we've actually brought a uh, full package of our response to the comments. I think Alyssa might have them over here, which we're happy to leave with you, uh, which go through each of the comments that were incorporated, uh, were uh, issued, and then we've addressed those comments and issued new plans. So we'll leave that yeah, with you. Before you leave that, could you just point out to the members where the existing building is now compared along, along, along the Wood Street? So the existing building generally is here. So we're basically bringing that building further back to the site. It's, if you've driven by there, it's basically right up on the road uh, with no real landscape screening in front of it. So this really helps to set that back. 
provide that separate parking and allow us to uh, screen that with some uh, landscaping. So we just wanted to take all this information and the information that was contained in the um, application and kind of summarize uh, what we found. And that is, first, there's no significant increase in traffic trips and no negative impact to the, tra to the traffic in that area, and that's primarily because it essentially remains the same facility. We're adding four new staff, but that staff currently uh, travel to and from that facility on a regular basis anyways. Um, there's a minimal increase in the demand on the water and sewer system, again, servicing the same fleet, the same vehicles. Just a couple more staff, a few more staff. The park requirements have been met. Uh, 42 spaces have been provided, and the calculation that we submitted uh, showed a requirement of 39. We've met the landscaping requirements for the parking area, as I mentioned. Um, we've complied with the lot coverage. And then we've met the site plan standards, which there's a whole section in Appendix A of your site plan application, so I didn't list them all here, and we're happy to revisit any of those, uh, except for uh, waivers for relief uh, requested for uh, the buffer zone 210-121.1 on the west and south property lines. Essentially what we're doing is, as I mentioned earlier, we're staying within the developed area. We're not going to encroach on any of the adjacent um, vegetated areas. And in fact, we're going to restore some of those disturbed areas along the edge. Um, so we're remaining within that footprint. And also for the sidewalks, section 210-136.1, uh, uh, there's really no sidewalks to connect to in that area. So we're requesting uh, relief for those sidewalks. However, we are planning that uh, some space that in the event the town does want to add them in the future, they have the ability to construct them at that time. And just to kind of sum up some of the benefits, there are, there are quite, a, uh, quite a lot of benefits associated with this project. Uh, first and foremost, uh, improved stormwater system, a compliant stormwater system to meet DEP standards. Uh, we'll provide interior vehicle equipment storage where a lot of that equipment is currently outdoors, anything that drips off those vehicles can get into the stormwater system. Um, so now it'll be indoors, that'll go to the sewer system. It also extends the life of that equipment, makes it safer for the staff to access that equipment, and allows that equipment to start up quicker so you don't have any long-term idling and allows them to get out and do more around the community. Uh, we're providing an interior vehicle washing facility so that any washing is done indoors and that'll discharge to the sewer system. Uh, and that's also in accordance with the DEP standards. We are restoring portions of the buffer that are disturbed on the edges as we develop that, as I showed in the earlier plan with the green areas. We're going to replant those edges. Uh, we're going to enhance the landscaping along the front of the building. We'll have improved overall building aesthetics by setting that building further back and then working with the DRB to come up with uh, materials that are consistent with the uh, neighborhood. And then ultimately we'll provide a, an efficient, safe, and uh, full compliant facility for the staff uh, to work in. And that sums up uh, the project, and we're happy to get into any details. Questions from members of the board? Yeah, I have a question. We just talked about the sidewalks. Didn't we just do sidewalk yes. paving down Wood Street? Yes, it's, it's almost there, and I, I have a problem with the relief of that as well. Okay. Why not put those in and just connect to them? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in great detail tonight. Uh, I have another question, too. Okay, go ahead. Um, the salt storage, how big is the, f the shed now? Versus what it is today. Jeff, can you talk about the volume? Um, the volume is uh, <coughs> approximately um, 33,000 um, tons of material. So it's a, a s increase from what they have now, but in a smaller footprint. We're able to achieve that with higher um, push walls within the facility. Okay, so there'll be more salt yes. storage. Yeah. Just thinking about the roads that we're going to be building. As well. so, okay. okay. Other questions from members of the board? Frank? Hi. Uh, comment and a question? Yeah. Um, this is really great. I mean, you guys have been working on this for a while, and it's uh, taking something from the 1950s technology to 2050. 100 year advance kind of thing. Um, will there be, I know you probably have planned it, but uh, CO2 uh, alerts inside uh, to monitor the, the exhaust and there's no problems there. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to echo. Uh, this uh, is general discussion. Do you want to add stuff like that to an outline for detailed stuff? or? I just, that's something that came up in my notes. Um, okay. Uh, two things, though, two questions. Uh, one, is there, um, for the roof of the building, solar panels. Um, and two, uh, we mentioned a while back about the temporary sheds, which were replacing the shed that fell. Uh, and 
use insurance, it's really good planning and stuff. Uh, you're going to look into maybe reusing them for maybe DPW or something or, or some other purpose uh, for the Parks and Rec or something or, or schools or... This is general discussion or do you want the answers? Go, right, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, for those, we are looking at repurposing those yep. for both our temporary operations and then future operations, whether they're used by the DPW or Parks and Rec or the school department. Still in play. So. Yes. Nice. Thank you. Okay. So, Let's uh, move along. Uh, any quick comments on the general presentation from? Oh, I just somehow want to add. Oh, go ahead. We're, we're going to get to okay. add. We're not. We're not there yet. Okay. We're we're on number one still. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cliff. Cliff Kistner, 86 West Main Street. Hi, everybody. Um, the, the the only question I have is with the, the location of the the gas pumps are on the for the, for fueling um, is really close to the. The buffer zone for the um, wetland. Um, I'm wondering, uh, what's the catch basin what? of what? that? Why don't we add? We'll add to the outline gas pumps. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If okay. I could interject on that. Most of the property is within the buffer zones, but it's 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 going to come out better now. I mean, in better in future than it is now, sure. based on these improvements. Okay. Excuse me. Let's, let's go later okay. with that. Okay. Jennifer, do you have? Uh, um, I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, just a couple of quick uh, administrative comments. Um, we received a call late today from the fire department. Um, they didn't have a chance to review plans and provide comments, but they are planning to do so. So you will have comments from the fire department coming forward. And um, design review board is still reviewing and will review again on April 19th how that plays into your decision-making process. I don't know. They're working on materials and color choices at the moment. So Claire can speak more about it she chooses. But okay. that's really all I have. OK. Uh, Beta, have you guys got you can summarize maybe your, our, your your big concerns that you haven't been able to work out with these guys? And, and have these guys been uh, easy to work with or uh, tough? <laughs> They've been great. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. Um, we had some questions about some of the storage and the chemicals. They provided answers to that. Um, also, wanted some further detail on the fuel storage, and they've given us some additional plans and information on that. Uh, we have not had a chance. We got that uh, late Friday, so I haven't had a chance to completely go through that, but it looks like it's going to satisfy our, our concern. Um, we also wanted them input from the fire on, on the storage of the hazardous materials in their input. Um, as far as the uh, site, we were noted that the 39 parking spaces, they had a, uh, a, because it didn't fit a particular category in your in your uh, regs, they had a formula they came up with that seemed reasonable to us. Um, we asked for the truck turn, make sure the site could handle whatever deliveries you're going to make, and that seems fine. One question we did have that is on the uh, lighting and uh, the height of the pole mounts, and they have subsequently said that they were 15 feet to meet your regs. Um, we did have a comment to consider adding a couple. Um, wall mount fixtures to improve some of the foot candles near some of the entrances. And um, aside from that, it was mostly um, minor plan edits and of that sort that they are uh, addressing. And we had also asked for some clarification on the pipe capacities of the roof leaders, which they are indicating they're, they're going to be forthcoming. And in terms of stormwater management, our understanding was that, that you know, we had reviewed this previously um, for CONCOM. And our understanding is that CON, uh, excuse me, uh, we wanted confirmation that CONCOM also viewed this as a minor change. Um, our interpretation is that although the, the layout is slightly different than what was presented to CONCOM, the, the net result is, is the same. So. So it sounds like other than a few minor issues, you're engineer to engineer, you're going to get all that resolved by our next meeting. I would expect so, yeah. And we're going to have a clean letter, I hope. From yeah, I don't see anything okay. in the way of that. Let's, uh, let's go to the fun part. And this is where we invite more folks to the public and the planning board members to add to our outline. 
And at this outline, we try to organize our thoughts so we only talk about one thing. We talk, talk it to death, get to consensus, and then move on to the next item. So are there other items that people would like to add on to the outline? We already do have the fuel island under uh, 1A there, or 5, 5A. Uh, uh, so we'll talk about all the fuel line, island issues kind of at that point. Uh, are there anything else, that, Claire? Yeah, um, public access for services. Um, I know it's a really tight site, and I know that you've got this new security feature with the gate to prevent people in back, but there are two public services that have been removed. One of them is resident salt sand, and the other is ash barrels. And I don't know how you're going to deal with this with that security gate situation, but those are two things that I know people look for, and it needs to be figured out because townspeople are not going to be happy if the DPW doesn't give them those anymore. Maybe the ash barrels can go down a fruit street. I don't know. Um, but we need to kind of figure out how the public's going to get those services. Okay. We'll, we'll add that to the outline. Uh, and we'll add that towards the end so you get some time to come up with an answer for that one. I'd like to add uh, screening for the emergency generator onto, onto this and also the sound of that emergency generator. I know we approved it before. I assume it's up and running now. The new emergency generator, is it running? The one for the pump station? Yes. Uh, that is not yet operational. Okay. So We're waiting for Eversource. Oh, okay. <laughs> and solar so, panels. So it doesn't turn so it doesn't turn on yet. yet. No. And then solar panels. Thank you. Anything else from the public members? Okay. So um, I think to we have 35 minutes. We're going to get through a significant number of these, I hope, tonight. But I'd like to start off with, with the two waiver requests, given that if there's something that people have a problem with, that will give you the most time for the next meeting to take problem with or with it. And the first one is the uh, section 21-1, uh, the buffers around non-residential uses in the residential uh, district. Are there any direct abutters here? Okay. In, 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 in your right next door or where? The one after in the back. Jeff, can you can you point out where they are? There? Uh, they're generally right okay. in, in the lower part of the site. Okay. They're, they're the second house down with the long drive. Three going new back. houses. Yeah. Yeah. You're the middle one. Okay. Welcome to Hopkinton. <laughs> You've been here for 20 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to this neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Welcome to a nice new house. Huh? <laughs> and, and the area that we're requesting the waiver, Jeff, could you just kind of point that out? Yep. Basically along, right right along in the south. Okay. Uh, let me just start out off asking a question. That's a just a normal forested mature oak trees, I guess, or something back in there? Uh, it's a, it's a wetland there too, so there's there's it's like a forested wetland. Okay. So that is wet. There's swamp maples in there. Right? I don't know what's in there. I. You can see the tree cover. Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. pretty heavy. It's, yeah. it's a mix of right now. I I think most of the leaves are gone, so they're pretty much deciduous trees. Sure. Yeah. If I could speak in favor of this, is that again, it, it's engineered to be better for the environment than it was now. So there will be less runoff, but the runoff will be handled and it's much nicer. Well, for the it, but, but, but the, that isn't necessarily what I, okay. what, the what I think the abutters' concerns yeah. are necessarily. And, and is well, our primary concern was what the building was going to look like that we could see from our yard. Yep. And and we got here a little bit early, and uh, they showed us the plans, mm -hmm. and it looked like it was going to be okay to us. It's probably going to be a lot better looking than what you're looking at yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Mr. Chairman, they can see the entire operations because there's, as you see, they can see right through the site. Mm -hmm. What they'll have when the new building is built is they will have that clean exterior facade that they'll be looking at 
all the noise of the trucks will be on the other side of the building. The backup alarms, the operations in the middle of the night during storms will all be uh, blocked by that, that building. Is there going to be any additional screening put along that section? Along that facade, we will restore uh, with loom and seed the areas that are currently disturbed that we're not going to be into, but there were no plans to add additional uh, screening in that area. Primarily because we're right up against, right right, against no the place to put them right. right. And, and, you know, sometimes we would ask to put, say, trees off on the neighbor's property, but in the middle of the wetlands, I don't think we'd want to do that. You know, that's that would that would not be a good thing. And I'm not sure an evergreen tree would, would, would last over in the wetland. It, no. Is the height of the new building significantly different than the height of the existing building? So if they're looking at it, Mm -hmm. Do you do you have a a, a, a board of of uh, you got the elevation elevation yeah? Wasn't it twenty two feet to the eaves? Is that what we decided? Yeah, on the back is twenty two feet to the eaves. So this is it. This is the front view. I can get you the side view too. This is the um, as you're looking at it from Wood Street, and uh, the roof the roof slopes down to about twenty two feet down on this end. So where they're looking at it from is from that side view. Are there, Do we have the height of the existing building? Don't off the top of my head. Somewhere in our package we had elevations of that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. There, there's uh, windows along that facade? Yes, I'll pull that up as well. And yeah, we've got it right here. Oh, okay. So we're sloping down in the back, so we can raise it, raise it up here. Yeah. Okay. So it's basically this elevation here. So what was that, like a concrete block at the bottom with a... Uh, it's a concrete-faced uh, rigid insulation at the bottom, and then just a... Um, uh, Steel stack, yeah, steel no, foam panels. insulated panel uh, with some translucent panels. We're actually in the process of recommending a reduction in the amount of translucent panels just because they don't need that much on the back. So it helps to break up the massing. We're talking with the RB about some earth tone colors um, to help blend it into the environment. Make a camel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no blues. No blues. <laughs> So that, that eave height is, is about 22 feet. 22, yeah. yeah. And, but the, and the existing is what? Well, well I'm not quite sure. The existing is somewhere around. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. probably a little bit more than that. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere okay. around 20. But we, we, are raising, we are raising the grade toward the back, too, because now it all slopes toward the back from Wood Street back, so we're kind of leveling it off. So, mm -hmm. so right. that would be the eave of the existing better. building where the vehicles are, but the salt should, of course, that eave is a little higher. higher. Yeah. Yeah. And, and right. same with the boxing sites. So my question is, um, just for the abutters, um, with all the trucks that are going to be stored in there, starting up, and they're running inside the building, what kind of insulation is in there for sound and noise pollution to to the abutters? Yeah, so we have a four-inch uh, factory foam insulated panel, which is actually greater than the requirement for um, for energy code. So it's an improved insulating value. Um, and then inside, the benefit right now when they're outside, they end up having to idle mm -hmm. for a longer period of time just to get them up and running. Um, they, they'll basically start up and immediately leave, no, no idling necessary. So your overall, um, any exhaust that's coming from the site is going to be drastically reduced because you're able to get the vehicles out much quicker. Additionally, during storms, snowstorms, if they pull in and park, they leave the truck idling so that it doesn't freeze up. Right now, they'll be able to pull into the building, turn it off, and leave it so you won't they won't be wasting that fuel, you won't hear the vehicles outside, improved operations all around. Thank you. Uh, I have one question about the uh, generator that's not operational yet for the pump station. I guess my question is how often is that going to run and how loud is it going to be? So that will run, uh, we will exercise it once per week just to ensure that it's fully operational. And I think uh, we put a time limit on that from seven or eight to five or something for that yeah. normal exercising. We would do that during our normal operations between 
7 and 2.30 when the, when the crew is there. Uh, part of the reason that's so large is because of the sound attenuation. Mm -hmm. um, so if it were non-emergency, it would only start up once per week, 10, 15 minutes, just to ensure that it's fully functional. Um, and that, that did receive a separate site plan approval from the planning board, so that will be screened on its own in addition to whatever, whatever the planning board wishes to see through this process. Thank you. Any other comments? As, as a butters, we, we treat you guys a little special on these movies. No, I think all of our concerns have been uh, adequately addressed. Okay. So, given that, is there consensus on the board that we'll be looking to approve the the buffer waiver? I would. I would. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the installation of the sidewalks along the frontage. As everyone knows, this board is very much in favor of sidewalks. And I'm not so sure I support that waiver. I'll just start right off. You're, you're within the small section of getting across the church lot to get a sidewalk into there. You're correct, Mr. Chairman. We ended the sidewalk with the last construction at Proctor Street, right in front of the Episcopal Church. Yep. Uh, there is a, a wetland crossing just where it says, right there where Jeff yep. is pointing to, there's a wetland crossing there. And we are working closely with DPW and the Planning Board to put together our next master plan of sidewalks yep. to see where the town will want to see sidewalk construction throughout the rest of the town. And I can imagine continuing on Wood Street would be high on everyone's priority as, 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 a, as a bigger area. And I just would rather see the site disturbed once or sidewalks, see the sidewalk interfere. Yeah. Well, no three development houses we're putting in there, do we know why sidewalks weren't required in front of that, those yeah. three houses? Because they were approval not required, so it didn't go through subdivision approval because the road already existed. Okay. Otherwise, if this board would have required sidewalks, okay. you can rest assured of it. <laughs> We're not, uh, obviously we're not opposed to sidewalks. That's been one of the greatest projects that we've, that we've undertaken as a, as a community. Uh, but sidewalks were not envisioned as part of the estimate for this, which is why we weren't making it part of this project and the funding source. But of course, uh, there is ample room there for construction of sidewalks should the town pursue sidewalks further up Street. Can you just speak to that? What's the distance in that area that you showed us before the Bethel area? I'm sorry, which distance? Between the parking lot and the, the street. Yeah, how much, how much grass <coughs> area, Jeff, between, yeah. Uh, it ranges from about uh, 8 feet to uh, around 10, 10 to 12, so it's 6 to 12. I'd have to pull out a scale and scale off, but uh, we had increasing down <coughs> and so we were uh, planning out a uh, strip so that we could further add them in the future there. But you've got a bunch of trees in that. By the time you put sidewalks and trees, it ain't going to work. Right. Yeah, we can, we can, we don't have to plant the trees. <laughs> <laughs> we can work on uh, adjusting the trees and laying out the sidewalk to ensure that there's a clear buffer strip there so that nothing is uh, in the way, nothing will be disturbed as part of that. So we can and, and the sidewalks the along here are around along the rest of Road Street are the curb and asphalt, just right. That's right. No, no strip. Correct. And we've been constructing a five and a half foot width from the face of the berm to the back of the sidewalk to ensure ADA compliance. When, when I emailed John, he said they would put in green belts wherever they can. This looks like an opportunity to put one in where we can. And I would like to suggest that the sidewalk does not be straight. It can take little curves and stuff mm -hmm. to give yeah. it some character. Yeah. So, John, on the sidewalk master plan, do we know which side of the street is coming down, or is it both sides of the street? The sidewalk master plan that we have now, we've only got one section left of the current funding, the million and a half dollars that we funded three years ago, and that's from Legacy Farms to Clinton Street. So we haven't yet put together the next phase. I know that the, uh, the planning department is working with uh, the IT department to put together a, a survey online and we do have a placeholder for this May's annual town meeting should a new plan be developed so that we can put sidewalks in wherever the town but wants the, to see But the them. sidewalks at Proctor Street are on the opposite side of the street, right? No, no, no it's, it's on this side. side. Is it no, on this side? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In front of the daycare center and the church. Yeah, and they go half, half about half, half the church is already covered yeah, to that goes, driveway. It goes to their second driveway. Yeah. So, I mean, you're only a couple hundred feet away from the sidewalk at right. this point. 
I, 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 I'd like to see the sign book. I, 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 I'm sensing a consensus that we would like to see plans on the sidewalk. I hear your concern, the funding and one project or another. Well, but we get that from everyone that's in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> and we usually say no. I've got a comment. Yeah. I will say that uh, the distance from the road to the guardrail is very small along Wood Street there. And when, you, when I go out to get the mail or go out to take the garbage, you have to be really careful because uh, there's a very high chance of getting run over up there. The road is so close. To, to where the garbage cans are in the, in the mailbox. When, if the sidewalk gets in front of your house, that problem will get, get solved. Mm -hmm. they, they've moved guardrails back along, say, Main Street. Yeah. We, uh, or you can put the sidewalk behind the guardrail. There's, there's wetland concerns um, all along that strip. There's the guardrail that we need to have to put the sidewalk behind the guardrail or relocate the guardrail. So the, the cost of constructing sidewalks beyond where we have now, especially on Wood Street, is going to be dramatically higher than what we have on a per foot basis for the others. The others went in a, was flat, there were no utility poles, there were no obstructions. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the next phase of that, but I think I'm sensing the consensus of the board is we're not going to wave it in front of this building from can to go real we'll quickly to go one step further. Is it possible to include that little section of sidewalk to connect them as part of this project, or does it have to be done? I think that's a, that's pushing our our, okay. our our area. But once you get one little section like that, yep. if John gets extra money yep. when he goes to bid the East Main Street out, that might be one of the ones he put does with the, to make it through. Really that. Thank you. I mean, so I'm looking looking for a sidewalk through that middle. Middle section, I don't know, in front and, and in front of the generator for sure, because I, I just don't want to disturb that a second time. I'm not so sure the the one on the east bothers me as much. There, there. Getting a, getting to the east part doesn't. I mean, you can do that when you when you cross that wet area. I mean, it doesn't make any sense for me to, to put too much in there, but the generator is going to have a lot of screening and stuff in front of it, hopefully. Right. Question, and I don't know who, if, who has the answer or if we have an answer, but um, the land to the uh, east of your our property, DPW property, uh, between St. Paul's, is that uh, town land? Uh, that's, it's a wetland, but is it town owned or is it owned by the church or is it owned? Do you show the property line there, Jeff? Uh, no, on this one. But don't. Do, um, don't. Don't bottom. Looks like it's the church. Okay. Is there a Okay. Yep. This nice. Yep. Ooh. Looks like a lot of that is ours. <laughs> yeah, it's, cool. it's too but bad it's wet. Yeah. 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 It's all wet. I did meet with a member of the vestry of the church, and they were satisfied with the plans. I also met with, uh, either indirectly or by telephone, with many of the direct butters around the site. Most of, most of their concerns were were minimal. Question um, yeah. about sidewalks. Uh, if we do, like he was suggesting, do construct a sidewalk through that area where it's wet between the DPW building and the church, uh, I forget what it looks like on the edge of the road. I think it's a guardrail right on the edge of the road um, and then a drop off. So I think there's kind of a wetland kind of little stream that kind of comes up. There is under. In fact, it does, it is a pretty big one. Um, never mind, I need to look into it a little bit more to understand it more. And that's real close. Uh, it's real close to where the, uh, the prop, not where the property line is, but it's right, where, right where Jeff is pointing. Yeah. 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 It's real close to the existing driveway. Right. Well, we've well, got to solve the problem eventually. Right. The, 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 the beauty for that, though, is you own a lot of that property, so, you, you know, if you have to s s s put some slopes but if, in, you'll but be if it is But if it is all wet, uh, we may be forced to the other side. So without without a master plan of where the sidewalks are going to go. Dan, the yeah. CONCOM has been very good for us putting sidewalks through a lot of wet areas. Well, Because the road is pre-disturbed and it, it makes yeah. the wetland safer if there's a buffer and um, 
a physical buffer from the water running off and stuff like that. Yeah. But if, if the option for the other side of the street has no wetland impacts, well, they're going to push this. But we're not, we're, but we're not going across and back and forth across Wood Street. Yeah. Yeah, that's too we started the sidewalk on the one side, and we'll, we'll continue that, that area. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think there's a consensus that uh, we're looking for a sidewalk from the center island and then all the way to the western boundary line, right there. Okay. Uh, uh, I would say the whole the whole property. If, if we're asking, well, to at least have it be looked into. One one is one is flat and dry. There's, is there flat. is the major question of how on, we can do it. On the other hand, the, the people in the town have, have, have done at least fifteen million dollars or so in the budget. Mm -hmm. You know, I, if <coughs> if you get bids on this thing, you might have money to put a sidewalk in. We wouldn't be opposed to that. I don't think anybody's opposed to sidewalks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, is okay. Can you word it possibly kind of yeah. optional for that portion? Well, that, we that portion, if you did a condition on that portion, you're basically conditioning the permit on getting, making us get another permit mm -hmm. from the Conservation Commission. How close is that after that culvert? Well, what's that? The, the 12 feet, 10 feet? This distance here? Yeah. Approximately. It's probably 20 feet to about this point here where I believe the cover is. Do you show the end of the guardrail there? Yeah, the guardrail is basically right here. And is it right up against it? Because it's, it's very it's narrow in there. The guard, the roadway is maximized within the wetland, and the guardrail is right up against it. Yeah, this this is going to be. This is not something where you can just fill out and yeah. build a sidewalk. You, you might have to extend the culvert. You have to put it in a new culvert. Correct. And so, to, because of the drop, you can see the contour, it actually drops off steeply. So it's not like you can just fill a little bit because you'd end up filling the stream. So this would be something that I think... Um, just, I mean, just one more comment. When you, when you bring this up to the town meeting and you explain to them that you know, we're funding for a new DPW and they're going to say, oh, great, we can get sidewalks connected there. And you can say, well, no, we can't do that 20-foot section. It's not going to go over too well, yeah, right. in my opinion. I agree. Okay. Let's uh, move on from sidewalks. I think we have a consensus. Okay, let's go to the. Uh, we've got a well, we've got a good 15 minutes. Let's let's hit the water resources protection overlay district, uh, which has got Jennifer. What are our statutory requirements with this? Right. So I actually, after Ken and I spoke the other day a little bit about this, I spoke with. Um, Catholic, the director of municipal inspections and the zoning enforcement officer, and it's his opinion that all of these um, uses are existing on site now and existed prior to the adoption of the Water Resource Protection Overlay District 1, which is what this is in, and so that they would be technically grandfathered under that and not subject to any of the bylaw restrictions. Okay, so, so statutory, we're all set. Correct. Okay, now let's talk about it practically. That's right. <laughs> what good things are you doing for a storage of de-icing chemicals? So, would you like me to answer that? Yeah, go ahead. So, one of the, with this new salt storage structure, <coughs> we're providing it's referred to as a higher arch umbrella, and you might have saw it in the earlier picture. It's a higher structure that has a higher door opening. The older salt sheds, they were lower, and so today's delivery trucks would have to dump outside, and then they'd have to move it into the shed. So you get a lot of residual. So this structure is designed so that a truck can pull right in, back into the structure, dump under cover. So number one, you eliminate the double handling. Number two, you eliminate the residual that you would have left on the ground. Also, um, you can see that we've provided a small ramp area here, and, and that's really something that's done today in the industry that's uh, really helped control the product. Salt's expensive. They don't want to spill it anyways because they need it to treat the roads. So by loading it inside, all the material handling is done under cover, and then they have the ability to back out and load off of this ramp, and they're about three feet higher. They can actually see um, better into the bodies of the vehicles. It prevents them from having uh, overfilling, which typically would occur, and as they drive off, it would spill out, and it also prevents uh, spillage from missing the body itself. 
So those two features there alone will uh, greatly improve um, management of that material. Number one, that helps the environment. Number two, it helps protect that investment in the product that you're trying to get out on the streets, not on the yard. Jeff, also please describe the drainage runoff, where the drainage flows. Yeah, so everything that's drained will ultimately go through um, the series of, of structures that are uh, within the site. This is not running directly off uh, into the wetlands. And there's also um, one of the things I failed to mention is that they have uh, standard operating procedures now, too, where if you do have product that's spilled, um, they scoop that up immediately because that ultimately, if it's put back in the shed before it gets uh, soaked up with water and starts to uh, leach out, can be reused. So um, I think, you, well, number one, you're containing um, the treatment uh, inside, inboard, and you're not flowing directly off. Gives the opportunity to collect anything that might um, spill off and put it back into the shed. Does the treatment actually take any salt out of the water, or is that just dissolved in once it's dissolved? No, there's no treatment of dissolved okay. salts. So yeah. basically, so, if, it, if it gets in with the water, it's yeah. in with the water and it goes off so site. The, so the goal really is to manage it so you have okay. as little material hitting that ground on the site, only what's required that would be normally used on a road. Okay, so if you're if you're coming in on a storm, the guy will pull his truck up right like there. Yeah. Head is in, obviously, because you're going through the traffic pattern. And and he parks there, and, and the, the guy goes in, takes a shovel, backs out with the end loader, yep. goes forwards, and dumps it. Mm -hmm. right. and just keeps back and forth. Yeah. And then the, the truck, once it's fully loaded, it just goes out, it does a loop, and exits the site. Does it, what do you mean? It does travels it? through the building? Not necessarily. Uh, on a typical storm operation, we would likely not be opening and closing the door. There's enough room there for it to circulate, as Jeff is showing, and then back up. And, and that driveway safely accommodates What's two, the width of that, Jeff? Please. Two big, big. This here is uh, about 40, I think it's 42 feet. Yeah, we have plenty of room. We ran okay. it with the turn and templates to okay. ensure that a vehicle parked there wouldn't be uh, impacted. Um, okay. It just looks smaller, I guess, than the scale of the plane, but if that's 42 feet, then you've got a 30-something at the choke point, I think. Correct. At one point, I thought there was a drive-through idea. There, there is a drive-through. So if you were a vehicle at the end of the day, for example, you can pull in, you can uh, fuel up at the, the fueling depot, you can pull oh, in, you can yes. wash your truck, and then pull directly into the garage. If your truck is clean, you can just pull in through the back there and then park in the garage. I mean, the, the salt shed, that just, I think we talked about it, and I'm, I think I'm remembering now, it was, it, that's where, never mind, I remember now. Okay, uh, you, you just brought up another, where's, where's the, the, the truck wash area? You must have the truck washes right here. Okay, so you pull in that door if you want to get washed. Yeah, and there's actually a door inside too, so that you can pull in, wash, and then right into the building. Place. Okay. You don't have to back out. The vehicle's not freezing. The wash water isn't getting off into the wetlands. It's all being contained. Okay. Uh, so, are, are we? Anyone have any questions on de-icing portions? One other thing, Mr. Chairman, you can Jeff, if you point out where our our liquid de-icing chemicals will be stored. We currently have two large tanks that are right next to our existing salt shed. Those are going to be relocated next to the new salt shed. And what, what's that round circle? Is that another? In front. Oh, that's just an area to place the um, uh, historic steamroller. <laughs> gotcha. uh, the refurbished steamroller. It's more of a flight ball. If this was in the industrial A district, or B district, we have pro prohibitions of putting equipment out in front of, of buildings <laughs> without fences. It's a historic structure. You can wave some of those. Okay. <laughs> when does that happen? Okay. Uh, let's see. Everyone's, everyone's done with de-icing. How about the hazardous chemical storage management? So, um, one of the benefits of this facility, too, is that we're able to um, upgrade the, the storage of chemicals inside the building, primarily for the vehicle maintenance operation. Um, all those chemi chemicals will be stored either in 55-gallon drums that are stored on a spill containment pallet or in a double wall, roughly 280-gallon um, tank that's then piped to, like, an overhead jiffy loop system. This prevents them walking around with containers, tripping, spilling. It's uh, overall safety. It's better. It's all in a closed system. 
that room that's storing the chemicals also has a sump in it. That sump is designed for the largest volume tank in that room and then 10% of the aggregate of the remainder of the <coughs> tanks, and that's all required by the fire prevention regulations. That sump does not have an outlet. It's a liquid-tight sump, and it also has an alarm in it. So in the event that a uh, tank were to fall over and not fall on the spill containment pallet, it would go into that sump. It would immediately um, set off an alarm so the occupants of the building know that um, a tank is spilled within that room. So we really have uh, double containment provisions within that facility. What what type of stuff do you store, typically? Hydraulic oil, motor oil. More more, more oils and, yeah. and, and some solvents, I guess, to clean engines and yeah. stuff. When solvents you know. would be a much smaller containers, not in the, not in the 55-gallon capacity. Yeah, those would be in the, um, uh, we have um, flammable storage cabinets for the smaller solvents. Okay. Paint. Touch up paint, but we don't. You don't. You, you don't. You're not going to be painting any any vehicles here. No. Okay. Are there questions on this one, Cliff? Um, yes. Um, directly to you. Uh, the the venting of, of the of that room. How does that how does that vent out if you do have a hazardous spill? And what about surrounding neighbors and stuff like that in association of that? Um, the chemicals are all class three um, B. Combustible fluid, so there's really no hazardous um, hazardous uh, chemicals that would pose an issue. We do provide an exhaust fan for that space, but um, there's no chemicals that there's would so, pose so a hazard to the environment by venting off. So there's no need for a filtration system on top of the building for uh, um, for venting under yep. that. Now, Ken had mentioned something about paint. But what about the line painting on the road? Um, where does that paint get get st stored? We sub that out to a subcontractor. I see. Okay. When, and we won't be storing any additional chemicals that aren't stored there. Then. Okay. And the storage will be much safer and much more. Protected. Consensus on hazardous chemicals and storage, all set. Almost. Oh, the, go ahead. The gas pumps. Oh, we're, we're, we're coming to. Can I just ask one question? Sure. Ken, I don't know if it's a big deal, but um, once a year, you guys have hazardous waste for the town to drop off. Mm -hmm. Is that been thought through at all? Is it possible there could be more frequent? versus once a year versus trying to hold on to it? Uh, more frequent would depend on town meeting appropriation. Uh, we do one per year. We get a $12,000 budget that handles. I, w I was just thinking more along this design. Is there anything that would help? No. Okay. No. Okay, let's go. Let's finish with the fuel island probably today. And, or let's, well, we'll see where we are. Maybe we'll get one more in here. So, so you want me to start? Yeah, Mr. yeah go ahead. Uh, Jeff, if you could point out where the fuel island used to be. Uh, it, was, it was right in the center, and it really obstructed all of our operations for filling the salt shed, for uh, just general vehicle, vehicle movement throughout the site. So we did move it to the side. Um, we did go before the Conservation Commission. They approved the relocation, and this basically, uh, th this we have to remember this is also going to be fueling for police and fire, mm -hmm. so it keeps those vehicles, when they're being fueled, away from DPW operations. Uh, and again, Jeff, if you'd point out where the general flow of the drainage would be. Yeah, so where it was before, that's the, the one thing that's important to note is it doesn't change where anything would end up, so that you have um, drainage structures that are here. Those drainage structures are going through, first, the deep sump hooded catch basin, and then second, they're going through the uh, storm technic type, the more technic type unit. Um, so any of the drainage that existed, whether it was here or here, uh, would end up in the same location. And we are providing uh, the fuel pad that has the positive limiting barrier. You see them at a gas station. That's to capture anything that might uh, come off, residual that might come off. And because of the volatility of the product, it, it evaporates, basically. Um, so that's also factored into it. Tanks are double wall, leak detected, um, bull, uh, ballistic proof tanks. Um, they're surrounded by guardrails or bollards having uh, secondary protection. And by locating it here, it really does take it out of that potential for impact. It really improves the safety of the system, all the while the drainage ends up in the exact same location. So, Frank, you, Frank, you had a question on fuel. Are you satisfied? Um, no. Not me. Was, wasn't, wasn't, I thought you had the fuel. No? 
No, it was oh, oh, Cliff was yours. <laughs> okay, Cliff. Um, with with you know, I've been to gas stations a lot, and I've seen people spill the gas out. There is even on a dry um, residual that flows into those catch basins that you're talking about. Does that run into your already existing drain area? Are you running piping from that platform? Yeah. All right. So what happens to that catch basin with all that residual um, toxic um, residual that is not liquid once it's evaporated? So any any residual, if there were to be a, a release, yep. there's a they have a spill prevention and counter controls plan that would be placed on the site, which is typical for any station. For fire department aspect, right? No, for operational, they'll have a, a spill response plan, spill containment kit. So in the event that something larger were to happen that exceeded the capacity uh, of that positive limiting barrier, which actually has a pretty high capacity, believe it or not, it might not look like it, but you, know, you have five rows of, of these grooves yeah, that, no, that are all interconnected. But if something were to exceed that capacity and make its way, first go into a, a catch basin that would have the hood on it, so any, it's all floating product, so that shouldn't make its way through it, unless, of course, you had a, such a large volume that it made it underneath the hood, which is unlikely. Um, and then second, you'd go through a four technic unit, which also has the ability to uh, remove hydrocarbons before it's, it's even um, making its way to uh, any uh, any of the discharge systems. What's the pr percentage of grade of, of that versus the the drainage? Like, is about it one and a half? Percent. About one and a half percent. Yeah. Grade? I, I, yeah. I think we're getting into the minutia here. Well, I'm just I'm just making sure that because we're, we're right on the edge of the wetland. And, and anything going outside of that scope is going to go into the wetland. Yeah, and it, the idea is it could happen now and be worse. Well, that, that, that's still, but we're, we're right. taking... I, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I would assume that Beta has looked at that pad and, yes. and it's... And and the and felt would also weigh on that, too, and the, and the O&M and the and right. response plan. So, uh, I mean, if there's a pretty extensive review going to take place relative yeah. to that. It's and again, it's it's most commission approved the location. Okay. Okay. Most, most, most of that is not necessarily where we get to the level that the fire department and other folks do get to. And we wouldn't have we wouldn't have put something there that would have threatened the wetlands. Number one, it, it did receive conservation commission approval, but again, we're satisfied with the protection around the tank, the fact that the tank is double walled, and the fact that everything, if there were a release, it would drain into our systems where it would be captured in a deep sump catch basin with a hood. Uh, or the Vortechnics unit. And if I remember from the presentation at town meeting, you're spending a fortune on it, so it's not, <laughs> it's not, uh, not, <laughs> not, a, not a come a little cheap one. It's, it's right. uh, close to a million dollars, if I remember right, or three quarters of a million. Yes, sir. Um, just quick comment. I heard the fire truck is going to be going through there to be refueled, but just wanted to make sure. I would think that the height restriction would be fine because of your big trucks, but there would be no. Would the fire truck go through the, the building on the way out as no. well? No, no. Uh, any anyone who's non DPW fueling would just do the radius. There's no turning yes. area there yes. for a fire truck. Okay. 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 I think we're right about the time where we wanted to go. I think we made an awful lot of progress tonight. Uh, Stormwater will probably next up, and you've got just a few minor things to work out with them. So I'd rather not talk about it now. I'd rather just say everything is cool. Uh, at the other end, lighting. My only question is, I think we heard tonight earlier there was 15-foot poles. Mm -hmm. Do 15-foot poles work here, or are you going to look for a waiver? Uh, 15, foot 15 works? Yeah. Okay, so that's and zero spillage. That's good. That's property. great. Uh, okay, we'll, we've, we'll be talking to the rest of the outline, uh, screening, public access for sand, solar panels, etc. We'll have the outline revised, but you, you, you heard what you got to Yes. Yep. And I hope that everyone gets to the point where we get a full set of plans, because I, I sense that within another hour we'll be looking for approval. I, I just sense that with what we've got left to do. I'm not making any promises, but, uh, you know, I think we'll be there. I would like to schedule the next one after design review kind of meets, though. So um, we can meet uh, April 25th. I think that's after design review? Yeah, we'll meet design review on the 19th. Okay. 
So that will so. give you a couple of days if they have anything that they sure. So April 20th at 8 o'clock? Okay, and now that we we have an hour at that um, point. Yeah, because we have we have a seven thirty. Um, Who's at seven thirty? It's the um, special permit for loss of historic structures from one fifty one Hayden Row. Um, Waterfront. Waterfront. Is that going to take more than a half an hour? Let's let's try to make that. Let's make it at eight o'clock. Let's hope we can get that other one done in half an hour. No, we don't have anything else on that night right now. So. Well, that won't that won't, that won't, that won't change. That won't change. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to uh, continue the public hearing to eight o'clock on April twenty fifth. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Members of the board. Thank you. Oh, you stick around. Yeah, we, we're talking about a couple other items. Subdivision inspection process. Oh yes. And street street acceptance. John, please stick around. Oh, absolutely. And, and maybe, maybe the folks from Beta can stay another couple of minutes. Get up the gear. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We let's 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 take the, the next item here, which is the subdivision inspection process. I believe. John sent the board, or sent me, which you know, all now have, a option for changing the subdivision inspections, which is basically to, I think, firm up the inspection process. I sense it's more of like a checklist to make sure that our engineers are looking at everything before it gets buried. Is that what am I sensing on this? Present engineers excluded. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't it wasn't beta, but I spoke with one of the inspection engineers, and my understanding is that the process, the way that it works now, is that the engineers they give a bid amount of how much they will charge for inspecting subdivision construction. They then have to meet their cost, make sure that their costs don't exceed that bid. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the times the inspections are less than adequate. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, less than adequate. Um, you know, they're, they're not as frequent as they should be. They don't get in and inspect the, the pipes as they're constructed. They don't inspect construction methods. A lot of times it's just they, they show up and they inspect perhaps water and sewer and drainage all in one day after it's already been constructed. Uh, and this, this really came to light when we were looking at the construction uh, construction inspection of Legacy Farms South, and then when we got into the Mews construction, uh, the, the construction inspection requirements were a lot more detailed. So there's a need, I see a need, to firm up the inspections that we have. And we don't have to look back very far to look at subdivisions that were either accepted by the town, where there was a failure of the systems, um, Look at Carriage Hill. We had a major drainage catastrophe there. Uh, smaller ones, uh, Snowy Owl, where catch basins were failing, they were collapsing. Contractors are putting in infrastructure items that are going to be accepted by the town, become a town responsibility, without adequate inspection. So I see the need to really beef up the frequency of inspections, uh, the, the number of times and the, the amount of time that the inspectors are on site. If an inspector shows up after everything is constructed, they don't get to see uh, bedding, they don't get to see uh, construction techniques, they don't get to see the way that the pipes are put together. There's a lot that occurs <coughs> during construction that isn't seen. And, you know, if, if, the, if the inspectors aren't there, it's not being constructed properly, and the town is, inspe is, is accepting something that is going to cause a liability either in the near term or certainly in the long term. I'm not sure you've seen any resistance from folks on this side of the table. Uh, I, I have I, a couple of questions. I, okay, go ahead. I, I thank you for your forward-looking and uh, You're welcome. Uh, professional engineering attitude. It's a, it's 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 good information. Um, what do other towns do to handle this? Uh, it's it, it's a mix of things. A lot of other towns have their own engineering staff. 
I started in my career by being an inspector of utilities uh, with the town of Holden. And what they do is they charge an amount of the bond to the developer which pays for the engineer's time. And some communities either have their own engineers or they have a, uh, they hire an engineer that comes in, like we did for Legacy Farm South, right. like we're doing for the Muse. That's not a subdivision, but same principle. Um, and the developer just pays directly those costs. So your recommendation like for like, some project would be have the developer pay for it, and but going forward, the best way to handle it is through the bond. I'm a little confused about how it's going to get paid for. Still through the developer. Still through the developer. And that can either be by uh, direct cost from an engineer, and we would lay out uh, But do you have a recommendation services. for the best path forward? Is it through the, through the bond where it's... No, I think well, it's it was best, a, best, it was a percentage of the bond, Yeah, in my example. Yeah. I think it was 2.5% uh, of the bond on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. Basically, I think what we're what he's asking is to make sure the inspector has a scope of work, and that the developer understands what that scope of work is, so that he, you know, you can. My first, one of my first jobs was doing this type of inspection for the city of Waukee in Illinois, and if you don't watch each pipe going in and make sure it's bedded, you just don't know what it's what it's looking like mm -hmm. afterwards. And you know, the water pipes don't matter quite as much, but if they aren't bedded right, they break over a few years, particularly you lay them on a, a rock. And the sewer pipe, Lord knows what it can look like if it isn't properly bedded. And a lot of sins can easily be covered up by uh, just backfill right. or moving the material in the trench closer to the pipe so that you can't see what the bedding material is, yeah. or you bed it where the inspector's going to see and the rest of it. You don't put the appropriate amount of stone or sand under the pipe. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be full-time inspection but it needs to be something where the inspectors have a, a good sense of the construction techniques. More than what it is now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I think what we need to do is work towards taking your general ideas and putting them into a scope of work, then we'll have a, a set of hear, a hearing on it to amend our subdivision regulations. I, I, I think that's where, Makes sense, yeah. where, where we're coming to. And, and, and Jennifer, I guess you, you've got some expertise with Beta, and you've got expertise with John to kind of try to give us a recommended sure. change to, to our rules and regs. And if I may, some of the, some of the services provided in other towns, they have in their regs a, a, a form, shall we say, that says, you know, different checklist items. And for, for instance, we'll go out and look and say, okay, before you backfill that drainage trench, we need to walk it. We need to make sure that all the all the uh, pipe is mortared and uh, appropriately bedded and things like that. And then we will sign initial that form mm -hmm. that we looked at it before as backfill. So, so like maybe that. if we so incorporate uh, uh, you know some of these checklists into to our rules and regulations. I mean, you know, I want to, the the worst worst thing that happens is somebody and I believe in Muse put a water line in didn't have anyone inspect it, and then they said, oh, well, it's already in. We did it. You know, and I mean, that's, that's in, in a, and I'm part of the correspondence loop uh, between Legacy Farms, Roy McDowell and, and Elaine and John. Of, oh, my God, it's, we're, we're costing so much to inspect Legacy Farms Road North, but you don't usually hear too much from me saying that that's a significant problem, but... Uh, you know, because we do want that road to last. Yeah, Cliff, this is not a public hearing, so we're just talking among ourselves, if you don't mind. Oh, can I, can I ask? No. Yeah. We, we, we want to get out of here by 10 o'clock. So one question. i got to manage the meeting. I'm sorry. And it's, 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 a, it's an additional cost up front for the developer. However, in the long term, it's a savings to the community sure. because we're not, we're not accepting the infrastructure that yep. has deficiencies. Okay, so I think we've, we've got a plan where we're going. The next is uh, discuss the reports to the Board of Selectmen regarding street discontinuance and street acceptances. So let's take the easy one. We proposed uh, the street acceptance of a bunch of older streets and Conley Hill Road. And I think you're okay with Conley Hill Road at this point in recommending for that, and the other ones are under the policy of people have been paying taxes on these forever, and we're, we're going to own them. Yeah. So, so you're okay with 
with, with, with that. There was only one question on Connolly Hill Road, and that was with regard to the berm. Yep. And we went out and looked at that and were satisfied. We had a, a, yeah, I remember that. I think the board members do. So that, now, the street discontinuance is the part of Peach and Franklin mm -hmm. when we moved it, I'll say, to the east, and then we got rid of the little jog mm -hmm. where it used to Y. Um, I'm all in favor of doing that, provided that we've gotten the sidewalk, which is going across Mr. Mez Mezit's property, to continue from where the sidewalk stopped on East Main to Legacy Farms Road North. The, the, we're, we're expecting an easement so that it can meander, because it's going to be very difficult to get there. Mm -hmm. This is in front of the solar farm. I, I will pull this, I would recommend the board pull this article if we don't have that other article ready to, to, to go with him. I, well, yeah. I spoke to Elaine a little bit about your concerns, and she said that uh, Roy McDonald is required to build a sidewalk there regardless of an easement or not. So well, Yeah, but I, we're, we're trying to make it easier for Roy to get it, mm -hmm. because otherwise... You know, the only leverage we have is is the new front yard in front of Mr. Mezit's house, basically. Okay. And I'm sure Roy would like to discontinue this uh, other portion because it'll make it easier to redevelop the, the old house there in the mm -hmm. in the in the in, that used to be in the Y. But I, I, you know, there's no reason why those guys can't strike a deal on this thing mm -hmm. in the next two or three weeks. What will happen with that land? We will maintain an easement for all utilities, but basically it goes to, you know, it goes, goes down the center and it well, goes to it the actually goes. It's all on the west side, so it all goes to the abutter, I think. Or I oh the the little Peach Street goes splits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure we have any utilities down Peach Street, do we? Or not Peach Street, the, the old where Franklin. Old Franklin used to go. I don't think there's much. There might be electric or, or telephone in there. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. That's we're, we're going to keep. That was overhead. We're going to keep. Yeah, yeah, it would it'd be overhead. Yeah. So, on there's a plan that exists. Okay, I'll take a look at the plan. I, I believe there's a. Yeah, I don't have it here, but I might have it upstairs. Yeah, we'll look at that. And, but yeah, that that's and that's going up before the selectmen shortly. Do we need to do something? Uh, you have to write a report, I believe. Yeah, have to write a report. Remember, Mr. Chairman, there is a wall section there because they ran into that telephone conduit. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the sidewalk may be problematic through there, so you, your, your point is well taken that they need to lay out that sidewalk. At that point, I think Mr. McDonald, well, maybe that's probably on this new easement. Uh, part of it might be on the easement. Right. So, yes, we, 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 need to, we need to make sure that we, we have a way of getting across there before we, you know. But you're saying they both want it, so they should be motivated to work up their differences. I think, I think they'll, they'll be, they both want it, and I think they'll both work out their differences. So yeah, the planning board is requested to provide a report to the board selectman that recommends or does not recommend the discontinuance. Okay. Uh, I think we ought to write a report that recommends the discontinuance provided that we get the easement for the sidewalk. But not until all the easements have been secured. Well, until, yeah. until we, that's been offered. Yeah, I mean, town meeting can do it at the same, same night. Will that occur throughout the rest of where Franklin was relocated from? Uh, yeah, I think so. Eventually? It, well, it goes all the way up to Fifth Street, I think, the plans. I, I'm trying to remember. I saw them like about three or four weeks ago. It's, it's basically take wherever that shifted. Maybe it does some more. But where, where the pole's still in the, wall, in the road, it, it didn't shift too much, did it, at that point? No, not at that point. At that point, it's kind of... On the old Franklin. It's probably the full width over. Yeah. Can you say original? Yeah. So is the town, again, I, I can speak to Jennifer, but is the town just giving that land to the abutters? Well, the, when you discontinue a road, they, the abutters get it. Okay. 
by I think there's yeah. Mass General Law for that. Yeah, there, I don't have the. The town doesn't mass need it. Law. Yeah, it's it's per some statute. I'll leave it. But yes, they do. They just get it. I mean, and 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 then they pay taxes on the extra acreage. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you very much. So, do we need to do something? Um, I just if this acceptance report, street acceptance report that um, was drafted for you is okay. Um, which, you which, where is this? That was the one that was just Chairman Belico. No, why am I not finding it real quick? Probably Here it is. This talks about Conley Hill, Valley Woods, Cheryl Ann, Carey, and Nancy Lane, and it is. Has all the plans attached. So I look for a motion to send to the selectmen uh, a street acceptance report. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. So we've got that. And then we will vote to um, send a, a letter regarding the street acceptance that basically states. The street discontinuous. The street discontinuance, we have no problem with that, provided we get the sidewalk easement. Contingent upon. Because otherwise, we've we, we got to push getting that part of that sidewalk built. Because that's, you know, we've, we've let them off the hook and we've given them a couple of years on that already. Okay. Thank you very much for staying. Yeah. Thank okay. Again, members of the board, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, master plan update. We've got, I think, three sections left. Uh, we're going to try to work on it a little bit, but Matt and I are going to get together and work on his. Brian's working on his. And you guys are. You ready? Okay. Okay, well, let's. By the, by the next meeting, we're going to have it have the drafts in because because it's going it's getting hard to schedule time for this. I'm, we might be into another meeting just to talk about this if we don't watch ourselves. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, we might have to have a special meeting yeah. for the master. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I mean. It. it as, as you can kind of see, I'm getting kind of concerned that we're building up a huge backlog between now and the town elections. And we'll have to see where it goes. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is approve the minutes for February 22nd, 2016. Comments? Uh, I just missed what you just said before that, but I'm sorry. Um, oh. I, the minutes look fine. Thank you. Claire? No, I'm 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 okay. <laughs> look, for, look for a motion to approve as written. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, correspondence. Let's see. I think you all got a copy of uh, Frank Siebel's resignation. Uh, and we probably should send him a letter of thanking him for his service. Great. Yep. So uh, we will do that. Uh, let's see. Other liaison reports, future agenda items, anything else? I'm trying to remember any correspondence I need to bring up. Uh, I don't think so. I don't remember anything specific. Okay. Uh, special meeting scheduled, and then we not enough people could make it, so it was canceled. Will that meeting be rescheduled? It's, it's rescheduled for Monday. Next Monday. Monday. Next Monday. Monday. That's the same one. Yes. Yep. That's the one. Yep. Is this on the agenda? Are we doing full yeah. 7.30 and 10? Yeah. Full 7.30 to 10, unless we get disgusted before, you know. So, so the Legacy Farm people are coming in, Pulte coming in 7.30, whatever. Then after that, we'll have our executive session. Oh, you're talking about that other meeting. Yes. Oh. Uh, that has not been rescheduled yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I guess. I thought I missed something. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. Is uh, it going to be rescheduled? I mean, I gather there was some important pieces of information that we needed to have. I think at some point it will be. But. I'll, t I'll tell you what. That might not be a bad idea. We might do that at the end, and, and if, if, if we can do that. 
have an executive session? Maybe. If 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 okay. if there there was a piece of information and I know know a lot of the details would that needed further review before we could re took talk about that. Or do you want me to schedule it on the agenda just in case? Uh, let's let's wait until we we have till what Thursday to, yeah. to do that. Yes. Let's make, let's find out whether whether we got some stuff on Thursday. Okay. If Thank not, you. we'll we'll maybe at our next meeting we'll start at seven ish and, and do it b before or something like that. Um, I'd also like to send a letter to Parks and Rec and uh, the Marathon Museum folks to have them comment on the draft of the restricted covenant. Uh, I want to make sure they get their feedback into it because I don't want them to think that we're not building them into the process. It's a little bit why I've kind of delayed that. You know, Mr. Mm -hmm. McDowell wants to give the land to it. I'm also not sure of the sequence because town meeting didn't allow us to accept it for Marathon Museum purposes. And, I, and to me, I would prefer to do it all at once and do it the, the right sequential, sequential steps. Uh, I think Roy doesn't want to pay taxes on it any longer than he has to. But uh, anyway, that's uh, uh, that's where that is. I'm trying to think of what other things that we need to talk much about. Oh, we have, there's a couple of new things, projects that are coming in. We have. Yep, so we have, um, so at our next official meeting, which is April 11th, we have a uh, scenic road um, permit for Stonewall at 110 Pond Street. Okay. Um, that's the only new thing. We also have um, the zoning amendment public hearing for the Marathon Museum and the um, 25 Ash Street continuation. Yep. And then on April 25th is the Hayden Road uh, Special Permit for Historic Structure, which is water fresh. Yep. And then um, all the way out to May 9th, we have a solar application at uh, 201 Hayden Road. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, so it's a stormwater management permit and a special permit. Yep. So it's 201? It's uh, right north of the... Um, Mr. Perkins House. Behind there. Is it Perkins? Oh, this one's yeah, Perkins House. Oh, I thought this was it's the other one. Perkins House is gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but oh, oh, this is. Oh, I thought that. I thought this was the one that was going on the Haynes property. Or the, no, no, no. Oh, the Hughes property. Or the, or north of the Hughes property. No, it's Collins. Oh, this is up. Oh, okay. So now <laughs> I got myself confused as to where that one was going. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Our last meeting, we were discussing some HR issues, um, and we were getting some information about the process of hiring a principal planner and what we need to do to do that and how that works. And we were getting feedback and talk about it at another meeting, which I'm assuming would be tonight. Do we have any further information? I didn't prepare anything. I thought we left it as a, well, we were going to let Jennifer run it out in addition in, in place. And if everyone's happy in about two months, probably Elaine will ask us to vote that. But well, my understanding is, and I think Jennifer's doing a great job and very organized, and especially today's meeting notes were excellent. Um, and I think when I said that last meeting, you did them instead of Elaine? No, actually, Elaine did the last <laughs> okay. one. But both are very good. Um, I think the process is that uh, it has to go out to bid and uh, has to be posted and then the planning board has authority to hire the principal planner and my understanding is that Jennifer should be the principal interim principal planner and hopefully be one of the candidates if that's the process but right now we don't seem to be having a process it just is what it is and um, Without any further information, I'd like to... I, I haven't looked at the HR requirements per se, so I can't comment on, on whether that's the way it is. But technically, at this point, Elaine, who still has responsibilities for planning, is 
technically the planning board's planner, per se. And while I go to Jennifer for a lot of stuff, I also spend some time with Elaine every week, too. Right. So, uh, so it is only one principal planner, or is it's it not a principal planner. It is a town planner, I believe, is what the charter allows right, us. Right, and we don't have that at all. So well, Elaine, Elaine has has that job duty. Right. Has that job duty. Okay. So for right now, Elaine still is a town planner. Town planner. Te technically, the town planner and director of land use and whatever. And operations. In operations. But is her official title? Is I seen in in one. Her title is director of land use and operations. Which is always what it has been. No, 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 no. It used to be director land. of land, land use, use planning and permitting. Because oh. then one news story says assistant town manager, and then someone wrote a letter about that. And I'm like, that's different. You know, you never you actually didn't hear that in the meeting, so it's not a man who's pressing a letter to have themselves or whatever. But, um, but in different news articles, there's different titles. Um, and most of them don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. So there has been any posting for. Well, I mean, I was hired almost a year ago by the town of Washington, and it was posted at that time, so I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, I, like, I'm not sure that we have to go outside or anything. Right, but but your, your job title is principal planner. It always has been, because okay. I've yeah. been hired here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for clarity, because from that meeting, I didn't know anything about Elaine's sure. promotion, which is well-deserved. She works very hard for here a while. But um, according to the charter, the planning board is supposed to be involved right. in these decisions, and there's a piece that was short-circuited. In, in hindsight, we, the planning board probably should have been on Jennifer's hiring committee as a representative on it. But you know, it's kind of the same thing what we did with the DPW director versus the old DPW board before. That people said, "No, nah, no, nah, you don't have to do that." But that's what the charter says. But I think it. I think it's. I think she's going to work out just fine in two or three months, and we'll be happy to hire. I, I think she will work out fine, but I, I think the process has to work out fine. No, no, no. The process is, is something that I think we should do. We're elected. We need we need to represent no, the, the town, and 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 then I'm getting feedback that, gosh, you guys just you know, have you you guys do this, not the, not the administration. So. I just need more information, and yep. I always need more information. I'm always asking for more information, so sure. I talk a lot. Okay. Don't be offended. I'm not offended <laughs> at all. Yes, sir. I move to close the meeting. Move to adjourn. Second. Move and seconded. Further discussion, seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Opposed, they will Thank you.